get this started. Tweet out the stream real quick. And then we'll be good. <sighs> okay, everything's up and running. Ch -ch -ch -ch. All right, we're looking good. We'll let, it, like, we'll let people get in the stream real quick before I start anything. Hopefully the audio is good. Let me test this out. Yeah, let's get slime doozy. Good morning, good morning. What's good, ZXPD? Uh, no scrims today. Today we have off. We start back up tomorrow. Some teams are taking Sunday off. Some teams are taking Monday off. So we took Sunday. What's good, Roy boy? Welcome. Morning, real PD. What's good? What's good? Opinion on the flank talking about Chati like he's some mid player. They can have their opinions, man. I'm done talking about that type of stuff. It's just. I don't know. Ooh, I almost broke that. It's just, I don't know. It's just full of, full of drama stuff. It's like, we know what we have to do. Dude, I, honestly, like, the only thing I'll say is we were talking about respawns. Like, that was the problem. Like, our search was the problem. And, like, yeah, sure, there's some things that we could do better in search, but it's not, like, all on Ant. It's, like, it's a whole team thing. Vids have been helpful. You're welcome. Glad it's uh, getting appreciated. Some of those vids take a fucking long time to make, but I think they're worth it in the end. And I've tried to base it off of, like, like the super basics, you know, like the super, like literally just getting into competitive COD maybe, or just starting out rank play, just to try and get people like up to page on what the, the basics of what people know already. So what I'm thinking of uh, is we're going to just go in through all the Toronto ultra VODs from the event. I think it's only four matches, which is kind of crazy thing about it. It's like nowadays you only need to win four matches to win the entire event and that was basically all of pool play back in like the CWL days and anything pre CDL. But we'll go through we'll go through everything. If I don't get it through it today, because I'll probably be on for I want to say like two to three hours probably. Um, then I'll probably do some more tomorrow before scrims. Yeah, people do, but that's just that's just the role. He's going to be taking more risks and being more proactive than anyone else. So that's, it's more of a chance for him to get blamed. Hey, I'm glad it helped fusion. All right. So let's get, let's get this started. Let me know if the audio level is good for you guys. I don't know, like if you want to hear the casters or not, but it'll basically just be background, background noise anyway. Oh wait, I missed map one. Never mind. Oh, I was gonna talk about the vetoes. That's what I was gonna do. Um, yeah, they were reading terminal terminal for a lot of it. I'm pretty sure. All right, let's go to skid, bro. Up, he 
So like this is a situation where bro, you lose the break on this side, like bad side, like Seattle was bad side here. You lose the break and now you're just like, well, I guess I got to go rotate a P2, but this guy already has the cross to it. It's a big gunfight. Two dogs and mobs, thanks for the follow. And Yoshi, thank you too. I'm very surprised they didn't change this skid red P2. But, I don't know. It just seems way too easy to hold, but... Just too many crosses. I mean, like this type of setup, you have like one guy on time at the top, one guy at the bottom P2, and then one guy at the garage, or not the garage, the dumpster, and then one guy at the tunnel. Like, you're not breaking this hill. I don't care, dude. You're not breaking this hill against a pro team like this. See, like, even if, even if they get close and you think they're going to break the hill, they spawn up right here and, and can get your cross to the to the hops on the hill. Like, even Ender gets a kill here, but then he gets some help from Kyler. Like, no matter how many kills that you get trying to break on this, it's like, when you're in a setup like that, it's just so hard. You notice that faster pace subs have been struggling a bit, like BZ and Ant, not saying they're bad, just not their best. What do you think Kleenex, why do you think Kleenex is thriving so much? Um, I just think they, they know how to play around him. And he's, he's like, he, he's not, a, he's not a bad player. He, Kleenex is fucking really good. It's not like he was ever, I think they've just like, they just figured out as a way as a team in Hardpoint to get the most out of him. And honestly, like we, we've been doing the same with Ant. I don't know, like, okay, sure. Like he's dropping like 0.9s or 0.95s and respawn or whatever the fuck it is, but we were killing it in hard point until up against like phase in that one series where we had chances to win. Oh, this is a game reset? I don't even remember. No way. Wait, what happened? Who disconnected? Oh, they team killed a Booza. Booza's the one who lagged out. This was the day one cheese. I forgot about this. All right, we'll go. We'll go to the restart. What cheese? I think, I mean, Alex is, Alex is a fine player. I think he's had some off, like, past two years, but, like you said, he has a good resume. It's just finding a, I guess, a team that he's comfortable with, or players that he's comfortable with. Yeah, ball don't lie, basically same break. But Kleenex wins the, the one-on-one on, on the rotation. It's a little bit different now since Toronto won the break before and then win the rotation they held all the P1 this time they win the rotation but they don't get the rest of the time P1 which is a fine trade like you're probably going to get full 60 on this next hill anyway Ill, Ill, 
sorry, four, four dead. They know they're spawning like tunnel area. All they basically need to watch is garage and tunnels. Move my monitor up, okay. But look how many, like, look, look how the layers on the map, bro. <laughs> they're just like soaking time. Now they're spawning towards this like P4 area. They're just pushed up here. There's no way they're gonna break. And now they're already on the rotation <clears throat> to the P3. Like you kind of have to chalk it as Seattle. Like there's nothing else you can do. The thing is, like this P3 is more breakable, so it's like. It's a hard gamble, but it's something you have to take it because you're just not going to break that P2 with 25 seconds left. Is the same player it always last live in S&D? Does it mean they're baiting? Uh, no, it doesn't always mean that. Um, they could just be like the off-site player or the island player that is playing towards the non-common site. Like if a site, like if, if a map is a sided, let's say, and most of the plants go towards the a side, and usually have like an island, one player playing towards b site. If the offense goes to that site and kills all your players towards the a site, you know, last guy alive isn't necessarily baiting. He was just on the other side of the map, not even the play. You know, so it's not always the case. Or let's say we're talking about the offensive side. And you're going for, you know, a hit on a site and you, you guys start getting some kills down there. The last guy in line is probably holding the flank or the pinch in some way. And if all of your guys die on the site trying to get that plan in, you know, the person who was just, their job was just to hold the pinch is last alive. So it's not like they were baiting. They were technically just holding the back line for your team and just happened to be the one to be last alive because they weren't in the play again. Is being a CDL coach a sustainable career? Um, I don't know, because I, I don't know what the hell is going on with the CDL and what's going on next year. So I have no idea. But so far, it's, it's treated me well. It's, it's like a dream job, honestly. This is hard because you spawn here, you basically have to hit old to like go through towards uh, like apartments because you know they're already set up on the rotation here. So you kind of have to like go through apartments or like maybe hit up through mid, try and kill this guy God stairs. It's just a, it's a super tough situation if there's, and especially because they still spawn here too. Sorry, I'm late, please don't ban me. You're good, G Reaper. Ah, uh, unfortunately they couldn't collapse on the hill. Let me rewind that. So they get like, they get some of this playground control, kill this guy. I think they end up killing this guy apartments too, but they're already starting to like go towards the hill. I think Alec even wins a one-on-one -on -one God stairs as well. Oh, unfortunately Inder dies. If he had, if, I don't know, I don't want, I don't want to say if like, if he had waited, but you know, if he had waited for the rest of his team, they, they break this hill, I think. How's it like working with uh, Karma? What's your guys' relationship like? It's, it's good. I like, I like working with Damon. I think everyone on the team vibes pretty well. Thoughts on auto vetoes? Um, I don't think they're bad if a lot of teams like playing it. But obviously, you'd much rather not have to have one. P5 is another one. You're always going to see someone top P2, and it's just going to be hard as fuck to break. Teams are getting better at it, though. Like, if you can get some good tacks on the hill, it's better. 
I think the meta nowadays, or not nowadays, but obviously the meta before the cruise change was still like, you're probably going to use the cruise on P5. But now that the cruise change happened where you can, like the trophies don't block it, I think you're going to see a lot more cruises uh, breaking these P5s and it won't be as easy to hold. I mean, obviously you would have used it before, before the trophy change because it was just the most open hill. But I think you're going to see a lot more breaks just because of it. What are the differences in your roles? Um, I mean, we kind of do the same thing. I, I probably bring, bring more like analytical stuff, but he brings more, a little bit more like, I don't know, what do you call it? Like game knowledge stuff or um, stuff that I, can, I can't do because I had never played at the pro level, but, but he can relate to. Does that make sense? Like advice in that way. Situational stuff will be both of us, but more um, advice to players that he would give if he were playing, if that makes sense. What's your advice on Ant needing to slow down and Dashi needs to speed up in hardpoint? I think it's an overreaction because we did really well in hardpoint this weekend. I think we're playing fine. There were just two maps, like the two maps versus phase were the only two hard point losses. I think we had the whole event and we had chances to win both of them. Or chances to have better situations. Yeah, I guess chances to win, maybe sure. I don't want to take anything away from phase because they played it well. It's just we didn't play as well as we, we could have, I think. What are your thoughts on people saying you don't really know anything unless you're a pro? Um, I don't know. It's kind of weird because you can watch a ton of COD and sure there are some things that you could not know because you never played. But now that I've been in like practice rooms for since the beginning of CDL, like third or what is it? Four or five years now. Um, I have a lot of experience just being with the team. I think the speed up slash slow down thing is very funny because it's not like in search we're just like, yo, AG play slow or something like that. It's just mid round decision making when we think, or not when we think, but when we should have an advantage, we're not taking a, like that advantage to, or we're not using that advantage. Like we're in that situation, advantage, advantageous situation, and we're not taking that and getting a good opportunity out of it. If you want to say that's, you know, make your pace faster, whatever the buzzword is, but it's a decision-making thing and getting on the same page mid-round. How has Pred elevated the team compared to Kyler? I mean, they just played completely different ways the thing about ag is he, he'll guarantee kills which is like really important sometimes How would you describe the difference between your leadership versus karma? I don't know. To me, I think the leadership part is most important in a player. And I, I see that with Ken. Because we can't talk of, we, we can't talk to them in game. And like, we can talk to them on the stage. But once, you know, the game is starting and things need to be like dealt with and have them actually, you know, do whatever on stage, um, it comes down to them. So I think it's more important in that sense. But in terms of like, you know, practice and stuff, I mean, 
we're always talking with them. Like everyone, everyone's talking, everyone's chipping in. It's not like anyone's not doing anything. What's good, not Kelly? I, it's it's not shade on on Kyler. I think Kyler played really well. It's just like it's a different play style. One like like Kyler played super fast and could create space for the team and wasn't like just you know he was he was buying space for the rest of his team, and that's something like AG might have to do more. I don't know, but like at least AG is like guaranteeing those like it's. It has to do with how you want to be as a team, formulaically. I'm not saying Kyler's a bad player. Kyler was great for us last year. We were the best hardpoint team for a good like month and a half. Curious, how important is having IG on a team? Um, I think it's really important in search for play calls and maybe even mid-round calls. But I think the mid-round calls should be based on whoever's in the position to do it. Um, and then respawn, not so much. Like, it, can, it, it helps. But again, once again, like if you're, in, if you're in the situation where you need to be the one IGLing, you should be the one IGLing. But it, it, can be, it, can be, it can benefit a team, but I don't think it's needed. Um, yeah, those, those are my thoughts. Because I can tell you this, there was a there was a match last year. I think it was Major One, where Ant was basically our IGL for respawn and hardpoint, and he did super well in the game. But he knew, or not he knew, but like it was it was a situation where he did so well in the game and he was calling out everything. But it's like it, it was an anomaly. Like it's very hard to be a full on IGL and be capable of doing everything that you need to in a, in a respawn game mode, especially for a sub. Yeah, against Florida Hotel, yeah. He did, he, it was an insane map and he was calling everything. And I was like, that must have taken so much energy and I have no idea how he did it because it's very hard to replicate that. That was the first time I'd ever seen something like that. Where sub was like full on IGLing, like it was UAV on the map, and also frying. It's just, it's very hard to do. Not sustainable, is what I should say. Why does Gump never IGL? I feel that makes him selfish since he just wanted to play for himself. Well, IGL is like, I mean, it's a skill. It's not, it's not something he was like brought up doing. Like it wasn't. I don't know. It wasn't. I don't. I don't really know because I. I didn't. You know, have Seth on my team for a long time. We only. I only was with him for like what three months. But I would assume like it just like some people have it, some people don't. It's like he was disgusting gun skill wise, but like that doesn't mean you're gonna have you're gonna be an IGL as well. It's not that he's selfish. It's just that it's it's a skill. Like. Yeah, he played with Krim, Damon, and, and Formal. Like, those guys had insane comms. Well, do you think Ultra's domination major one was that they were more ahead of teams in the meta, or are they far superior compared to everyone else? Um, I think they're just... They were just more on the same page. I think you can see it in their gameplay that they're their head in terms of i don't want to say the meta because the meta is just like what what do you mean like gun meta and perk meta i think like how to play hard point sure or how to play search yeah but that just comes with time sometimes and some sometimes like people are on the the right side of it at the beginning of the game let me get to this search come on Oh, Skid Row Search.
You don't want scum, scum to IGL. It's like Pred. And that boy needs to just let left to roam. It's like yeah, exactly. That's another thing. Like if if you wanted him to IGL, like then you're taking away from his core slang abilities, which is what you need him to do, because he's the best at it at the time. You know what I'm saying? Like you're not gonna have AW Scum trying to IGL for your team. It's not because he's selfish. It's because he needs to get the kills because he's disgusting at the game. That's how you're going to say your win con, you know? That's another thing. The core of the team changed the least. Like, Toronto had a one person change. FaZe had a one person change. We had a two person change. So, it's very different when you're changing two people versus one person. When, you, when you're like slotting people into how you want to play the game. And that's not an excuse. Like, that's just a reality. Like, are they playing next? <laughs> we'll get there pretty quick, assuming the game stays on. Why not just do what Halo does and have the coach ideal in comms? Why isn't it proposed for the coaches to come? Um, it's been pro proposed, uh, but I mean, again, they were first banned from the league, but then it was more so the skill gap that it creates for the players because it is a skill to be an IGL or have those like abilities to calm mid game about what you should be doing that people are like, oh, maybe it should just be the players and it should be relying on them, which like I kind of agree with, like it is a very big skill gap that some players have versus some other players on their abilities to do that. So like, I don't mind it. And people were like, okay, if, if you just had the IG or if you just had the coach in the comms, you could basically just be calling out as another person. And it's, it's, it's not as skillful in terms of like the mental like game, if that makes sense. It becomes more straight gunny rather than IQ plays. All right, I'm I'm done with this shot. Put Shotzi, uh, like slow slow him down and put Dashi on a leash. Like <laughs> we were probably the second best hard point or one of the best hard point teams in the game at the tournament. We were playing fine, and it's not like okay. There's another thing. It was like oh, Optic told him to do this. Like it was never something we said. It was something that he had figured out himself and what he wanted to do and to help the team win. It wasn't like, oh, we were like, Brandon, get in the hill. You're going to be getting in the hill now. It's like, Sam Octane was making good points about it, where it's just like, realize the power position of being in the hill. He's making it a power position. He's just, it's not like he's just defaulting to the hill. It's just, he's just near it more. How mental is COD really? I feel like it doesn't take skill to learn spawns and auto-rotate. Um, decision making. Being able to make the right decision every single time you spawn based on the information that you have is very, very underrated. I don't think you have it like in any other esport. I guess Halo is like the best comparable thing, but in any other respawn esport like that, it's it's super underrated and I'm surprised people haven't like realized that yet. Because it is hard to, to completely, like, make the right decision every single time. Like, if you don't make the right decision one spawn, it can completely lose you the game. Thoughts on Illy potentially being dropped? Um, I would assume it's not a game thing. I don't think it has anything to do with in-game based on his performance, but I have no idea. I don't want to comment on anything they're doing. It's not my business.
That's what they're giving him. We love to see it. They get past that, that uh, 30 second mark. <laughs> and they're able to get it as well. Do they know they won the round? I mean, they're, they're having a rough time. Yeah. Yeah, I like that Kenny play. It has a lot of, there's a lot of things that are going on around people's heads during those decisions. And every decision that they make. I, dude, I hate this map for search. It's smoke plat, go through it, hit back alley maybe. Maybe have a strat where you hit through tunnel. It's like, it's so bland. Spin man, it's hard to make decision. Yeah, exactly. But also think about the spawns in this game where you're just playing off of like probabilities of where they're going to spawn. You don't know exactly where they're going to spawn in this game at all sometimes. Like most of the time I would say you do, but general time, like there are a lot of split spawns that happen. Like it's a lot of things that you got to take into account. Oh, damn, we have 164 people in here. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I was not expecting this amount of people. <laughs> but I'm glad you guys are tuning in and joining. Yeah, the rounds end on this map very, very quickly. It's just a straight out bang out. Love the content, keep it up. Thank you, man. Appreciate that, Majestic. 3v1. What do you know again? Smoke the plat, double hit up it. Toronto's triple back alley to counter this shit. And they stuff it. Yeah, they looked insane. I, I just wish we got a chance. We had a chance to play them. I really wanted to see how we match up versus Toronto. Because personally, I think we match up versus Toronto better than FaZe does. So I just, I just wanted to see. But unfortunately, we never got the chance. I think we play them like, I want to say match four of this stage or something like that. What are your thoughts on new hardpoint points? Revert. All right, let's let's break it down. So invasion P1 should 100% be reverted to cafe. New mid court P4 kind of sucks just because of its white time ability. Like it's gonna be, you might see an invasion end off time in this next stage just because of P4 being super white time and also kind of P5. Like P5 simply because of like tax and stuff. If you don't have a trophy on it, you're going to get rained with nades and it's going to be white time. So I think it could turn technically into like that old sub base, but we'll see. Um, what would I say? Terminal. I think terminal is getting removed for Rio, but terminal, I think, I think honestly, terminal got better in a sense, but the spawns kind of suck like really bad. Like, I don't even think it's the, the hard point points that should be reverted. It should be, like, the spawns that should be reverted. Uh, what else? Karachi. Karachi P4 I do not like because, once again, super white time. I liked it better in the fountain. P5. I'm still unsure yet of P5. But at this moment, I'd rather just revert Karachi to what it was before. New sub base, I actually don't mind. I'm trying to think. Yeah, I assume new sub base I don't mind as much. And then was there any other changes? I think that was it. Check out the Call of Duty store in game now. Hello and welcome back. We're getting ready to I don't think the game is that stale. I think, if anything, 
the new hills and stuff, you'll see more innovations. And then also that we're, we're getting a new map in Rio, I would assume. I, I, I'm pretty sure that's basically going to happen. I would be safe to assume that we're going to be playing Rio. Um, so that will be at least... Um, yeah. At least innovative that way. Do you think Rio will be played for all game modes? I think for sure Hardpoint... I think teams are going to be testing it in search and control, I want to say. I think LAT had said, or LAT, yeah, LAT had said in one of the, the chats like that they had tried it and to like just let us know, try it out. So I think teams might be playing uh, or testing out Rio Control as well. But we'll see. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, it goes in for search though. I'm not sure about control yet. I mean, honestly, all of them. Like, this is just such a one-sided game. So, Toronto, or Terminal is fine. Invasion has to go. I mean, Terminal sponsor. Kind of horrible. You are down a round, so we'll see. Invasion, best hard point? I don't think Invasion is best hard point. I think it's probably Skid Row or Karachi. But even new Karachi is not that great. If it was old Karachi, it'd be Karachi. But who knows? Maybe Rio's the best map. We've only had a few reps on it, but we'll see. Dude, this was like the one of the only Karachi controls. Us, this match, and then the New York-Minnesota match, I think were the only three. I, I could be wrong in that. What s and map would Rio replace? I actually have no idea. If I had a guess, probably High Rise or Skid Row, because those were like the least played, I think. There was no snaking chat at the event, right? I'm actually a little surprised. I assumed it was going to happen at least once. Like that P, this P1 or A point on Karachi is that that's the the one you'd expect. Kyler got caught with a pump. I think there was, it was a pump, but it wasn't. Uh, I don't think it was an intentional full-on snake. I think intent has to do a lot with it. If you're if you're in a gunfight, you go down and you pop up. That should that's not a snake, and teams are doing that. Hey, no problem, G, G Reaper. Good luck. Triple pump definitely did not look intentional though. Yeah, triple pump's hard, but. If it didn't look intentional, then yeah, I think it's, I think it's all about intent. I would have to see it. How good is that found spot from Illy? Um, if you're talking about, in, I don't know if what you're specifically saying, but if you're saying like in the fountain, yeah, that found spot's crazy. Teams are doing that, or teams used to do that when P4 was active. Hey, AG, saying thanks for the sub, my guy. Good morning. I thought we played Karachi Control at this event pretty well. We only played it once, but we played it really well. Brownie points. AG's my guy. Come on. Oh, it's like a stair. Yeah, yeah, you're talking about like inside the fountain here for sure. Teams, teams are doing it. I'm surprised they didn't get G8 because it basically is like a stair glitch. But teams are doing it like the whole time. We may have been doing it too. I don't, I don't remember. AG has been worse than Kylo this year so far, I feel. This guy has kind of faded. <laughs> He's looking for fucking baits. It's crazy. <laughs> Look, 
Look at the double nade. Oh, we're not throwing a trophy? I guess they didn't have a trophy. They have the two subs going there and double naded. You looking good right now, bro? Bro, same to you. I bet you're chilling on your couch right now. Shirt off. Watching me live stream. I know you, dude. <laughs> There's no way, dude. Chat, what do you what do you guys think about the Seattle team? Because I like to, I like to know your thoughts. You guys were asking me before, but you scrimmed today. Now we have today off. We scrim tomorrow. They're butt at hard point. Yeah. They weren't great at hard point. Pretty decent search though. Which player when you spectate an optic are you impressed with their their aim? Um AG and Brandon, they're, I mean, both of them, like, I'm almost guaranteeing that they're winning the one. You know what I'm saying? Can you explain why Illy is getting benched? I have no idea. That's not my camp. No comment. I would assume it's not in-game stuff, though. Bro, how hell is this? I don't know if you guys are playing this in rank play or whatever, but when you guys get four down or whatever, and they're starting to go on to B, and you're just spawning back alley, having to jump over this dumpster, it might be one of the worst experiences ever just getting naded especially if you don't have a trophy shit feels ass what's your take on boston with asim now i think they get better i always liked asim i also think like you see teams making changes for these amateur players and they already have like a lot of reps with this new patch Curious how coaching works with you and Damon. Like, when are you more vocal than the other? Are you the main coach? No, I think we're both vocal. I think we have a good balance. <laughs> if Illy gets benched, who do you think should replace him? I have no idea. I don't know what they would want to do. Zinni? No. <laughs> yeah, I'm honestly surprised. They, they must have had a... Like, Seattle must have been late to the party with trying to get Asim and Kremp, if I had to guess. Damn, Toronto's smoking them in this. I think they 3-0 here. Or may get reset. Did they get reset? Yeah, I do remember this actually. At least it happened at the beginning of the round. Start the stack A, maybe when their trophies off the start, that's not going to be the go to. But 
Or we've seen this, like in the past on different Look at them just... <laughs> like, see, I was trying to make these play, plays on the flank, and they're just getting pre aim stuffed by Toronto. Just looking for them, trying to make a play like this. They're on time. We're going to give them the point, I guess. That'll be the first point done now. Yep. Even with lives. No big conversation there yet. And Illy, who's gotten pushed up, and I think I heard him maybe getting loud on stage. He's able to win one over at Junk. Kind of keep the pressure. Ender's big over here. Like we saw last time, he needs help. That's good help. Good help from Kyler. Good help from Kyler. What do you do when a team is playing like this, sniffing a route side and whatnot as a sub player? Like, how do you recommend getting out and creating gaps for your team? Um, don't take those routes or take different routes or try and mix it up. Because they're just playing discipline, knowing that, like, Seattle is a team that would like to do that. So they're probably just prepared for it as more than other teams. Just waiting for them to make a mistake, you know? This might be a federal question, but is Optic profit from his co from their COD team? I have no idea. I have no idea the financial is my guy. Sorry. Wait, how do they get on? I missed this. Oh, they just got caught the kills towards the use of the side. Oof. That's that's hard. You can't be going like three down in red there. Last guy live diner. Now you have the crosses. It's this is not good. Did you see the Steve schedule? No. Is it hard or easy? I think we play them this this stage. It's one of our first matches, I wanna say. I mean this is over. They gotta go. You guys lose a round. Oh, they did get in. What the fuck? How the fuck did they get in? Oh, Kleenex didn't get a kill here. Kyler took a longer route. This is the problem though, is like, after they get these kills, like, and salvage the situation, Toronto's still spawning up right here, just getting back into the fight. We call it like, you're playing zombies, because you're just literally playing hordes of, of people just coming right away. How does Vegas fix their reverse sweep problem? <laughs> just get ice? I don't know. Focus on control, I guess. No, it's not. Yeah, but thoughts on the new Vista map based on the mini map? Uh, based on the mini map, it looks like it could work. But again, you have to. The mini map is just so much. You have to actually like play it and test it out. All right, let's go to the next match. Uh, double terminal again? Yep. Yeah. Double terminal. Chose to play Invasion instead of Karachi, actually. Interesting. Probably just based on Minnesota's record, if I had to guess. Uh, so they're starting the same... Oh, it's, it's Skid Row Map 1 once again. 
So I'm pretty sure Toronto never played Skid Row going into this major. They started playing Skid Row, getting this good side. We'll see what happens on the break though. Win the break, good side. You're going to see them start hitting tunnel. Number five is going to try and pick it up. Scrap, let's see if he wins the one on one. Ah, he already gets the P2. That's not great for Toronto. And they lose the gunfights on old. Ooh. So right now, like, this is ideal situation for Minnesota. Bad side, kind of lose the break, but salvage it. They win the gunfight, or they win the trades on this new new hill. And they get this this old time with these guys spawning back alley. They know they're spawning back alley. Again, it's going to be floods of hordes, so you're not going to get all of this time because they're just spawning so close. But you're going to guarantee P2. Kind of like you guys with subbase, yeah. Basically, we we didn't play subbase until the phase series. And this is a, the common setup you'll see: probably double P2, one guy P5, yeah, dumpster. I was gonna say either dumpster or the tunnel, but they have this guy watching the tunnel. So hard to break. This shit's the blender. Does your philosophy do philosophically believe in a true slayer for the team? Is Pred the slayer? Everyone's a slayer. But I would say, yeah, sure. AG is a slayer. I mean, I don't know what you want. Like, everyone's trying to get their kills. It's not like everyone's not trying to slay, but... Everyone's trying to do what they need to do to win as a team. If that means getting the hill, if that means getting a kill in this situation, that's what they're doing. Just some, some people find themselves in more situations where they need to do one thing than another. Did you struggle with sub base and scrims before that match? Actually, scrims... So I was saying yesterday that the scrims like right before the Florida match weren't great, but the only map we were actually doing well was, was sub base. Or like one of the only maps we were doing well was sub base. So that's why we were pretty confident, at least in the scrims before going into it and then we played in the match and we knew that was the right for us at the moment yeah it's a hard situation for for minnesota they spawn out with what like 40 seconds left and now you have to take routes to try and break on this P3. You could technically just go to the P4, but now you're just giving them full 30 seconds. So I think they're going to try and hit through old here, but they just get stuffed once again. This is just very, very hard as a, as someone on Minnesota. Just trying to do something together, but... See, like, they're, they're having to just chalk it up, basically up. And just go through, like, bottom mid, top mid. They end up getting the scrap, but Toronto spawns out here. P2. So Toronto will just play tight. They went a one on one God stairs. They know they're spawning apartments now. And they can just play for it. Do you like terminal invasion more on the new patch, invasion? I don't think Terminal plays well at all. I think, if anything, Terminal is going to be the first to go on, if I had to guess. Ants a player that stats won't make up for what he does in the map or series. Yeah, agreed. Wake is big over here. He's just basically trying to buy time for his team, stay alive as long as possible. It's a good trade by Linz, but again, he's got a... He can't really do anything, just one before. Now they can start making something out of it. Get one kill. You're spawning them out. You gotta break this shit now. It was a good break by Minnesota. Or they should break this at least, right? Yeah. That's what happens when you wait for your team. You get big kills P2 side, wait for your team. 
Like if he dies here to this guy Karaj, they don't break this hill. But he stays alive, waits, stays in P2, waits for number four to get his like help over here. Number three, number two start working together. These guys on hill have to worry about both sides now, so it's a good break. What do you know? They get kills on on the hill. Wall bangs. That's unfortunate for, for Minnesota. That would have been a huge break, but they don't get time on this. Damn. Would you recommend getting P2 control to break P5? Uh, you don't have to break it that way, but if you do, it's much easier, I would say. Because especially if they have top P2 control while they're holding P5, it's it's pretty hard to break. But technically, if they are top P2 and you just like fully like cross over here and bully out time, like you could technically get kills that way. You don't necessarily have to have that side. Beagle, thank you, man. Appreciate that. Glad you're enjoying the videos. Wait, let's do a listening thing. Can you guys hear the listening? Let me know before I start it. Let me go to the beginning of listening. It's low, it's not really. Okay, let me see if I can turn this up for you guys. Right moment, accuracy on a three. Oh, they're holding it together. Accuracy. Quick listen in. Yeah, stay alive. You need to stay alive here. <laughs> These are not bad comms, it's just they're in a bad situation. They're actually decent, they're actually pretty good comms. Yeah, those are good comms. They break this? Oh no. Like, dude, this should 100% be a break, bro. Like, the fact that they're just spawning, like, bottom middle here and then spawning so close and they get this cross after, like, they've already tried to, like, break on the hill is, is so whack. How do you become an analyst for Optic League like Origin Story? What are your roots? Um, I started tracking stats. Back in Ghosts, um, got a gig with M MLG because I lived in New York. I was like just a train ride from their offices. So I would help out at the events as like a stats producer for like anything that was on the broadcast you'd see. And I did that for like all of the events between like 2016 to 2019 or 2015 and 2019. So I got experience like knowing the players, knowing the broadcasters, all that stuff. And then once CDL started, I got an offer from New York and then eventually ended up on Optic two or three years, no, three years later. By the way, I'm going to upload this whole thing to YouTube once again, just like I did the other one. Might as well. There's no point not to, I guess, in case people miss it or miss parts of it. Minnesota's playing this well. Honestly, like, they should have had that P2 break. But, like, it's just P2. And now it's, it's pretty close. 
Oh no. That stinks. Trying to get your gun up. Give me one second. 50 seconds now on the point open. Can Rocker take the lead? Holding perfectly so far. Demon Joe. No more help there. The trophies are gone. Over to the now the side doors. Here come Ultra. And the AR set you up. They bought you those initial kills. Now it's the SMGs that need to hold the line. Lane's first man. Vivid. The pinch. The pinch. Vivid. All three of them gone. Last man clicks. He's trying to stay alive. The contest. Wait, I'm going to go back to this rotation because I kind of missed it. Give me one second. Alright. So what happened after Vivid missed this kill? Uh, it's still salvageable. That's a huge kill by Wake. Gets traded though, so I guess it's fine. But like, he dies in the trade, but he's just back into the fight. And they're able to get huge kills. I think it was Lamar. Yeah, Lamar got a huge two piece at the back door. Trophies are gone. Over to the now, the side doors. Here come Ultra. And the AR set you up. They bought you those initial kills. Now it's the SMGs that need to hold the line. Can you leak your salaries throughout? No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> what the fuck? All three of them gone. Last man, Kleenex. He's trying to stay alive. The contest. And there we go. That's a, that's a 10 minute or. This is weird behavior. Like for Minnesota in this case, like you're still 224, like you're up 24 kill or 24 points. But dude, it's still like a tough situation because breaking this P5 off of this is like with no like initial control or no initial positioning towards this P5 is just hard as fuck, dude. Like I would guess that Toronto full holds this for the win. That's the worst part. If they have that 191 where they can just win off the new hill, it's just like, damn, yeah, we're up 20 or 30, but we need to break this shit. Everyone holding crosses. They're playing tight. It's just, you can't really do anything. How has the dynamic change coaching optic from last year to this year with Karma? Uh, not much. It's just he has more of a voice because, like, he wasn't obviously there last last year, so everyone's contributing like after the maps and just vocally. It's not like anyone's quiet and not saying anything. Everyone's contributing in their own way. I know this game isn't ideal for it, but have you seen teams try three R's and one SMG? But why hasn't anyone tried three SMGs and one AR? Um, I mean, there are some situations where you'll see three SMGs on the map. Like old Karachi P4, P5, Skid Row P4, you might see three subs just for that hill. Um, like Rio Hardpoint, like we haven't had too many um, like reps on it, but I could technically see it being a three sub map sometimes. Uh, the, the maps are just made for, for ARs, so you're not going to be seeing a lot of situations where you can pull out a, like a third sub. Skid Row P1 is another one where you might see three. But it's it's very like I would say it's very rare, but it's kind of rare. Why did actually chow P two instead of crossing though? Um, where I don't know where you're talking about. Like over here. Well, because you you want to put shots down on the P two guy, so like they end up getting this P two kill. 
which is important for like someone overseeing the hill. But I guess if they were to go to the hill instead now, that'd be better because they killed the guy on the cross. It's just you have the cross from so many ways. You still have a guy that's tunnel watching like over this guy on hill. You still have this guy graffiti watching the hill and watching the, the close cross. You still have a number eight in the hill watching the cross. Like you just have to take your battles at that point. There's just so many. It's, it's a hard hill to break, like especially with this setup. Do teams with great hard point success, success seem to get outslayed pretty consistently in this game, or do the maps just play that way? Is that true? I don't know. It, it doesn't seem like teams winning are getting outslayed all the time, is it? Like this is this this is, I guess, the case of it. But I think it's pretty rare to see that. You know, a lot of the times that you'll see that is because. A team might be like getting super like a super big amount of kills going into a money hill where it's a full setup like let's say this p2 like if, if someone if some team is getting a lot of kills going into that p2 because they're playing those power positions that you would play in the middle of p2 but the p2 hasn't popped yet but then once the p2 pops they get broken like all of those kills technically didn't amount to any points for you guys but you got those kills, you know what I'm saying? So that's the situations where you will see um, teams getting outslayed and, and losing, where they just get like insta broken off a of money hill. And that's the map. One poor the corner for All right, let's watch Karachi S and D because I think I think Toronto plays Karachi S and D pretty well. Is there anyone online I can download minimap images for all the maps? Um, you can just look it up. I think on the like the COD, there's like a CODpedia that has all the the TAC map images. But you can go to like TAC maps. That's another app or or Game Coach. Both have um, the maps and like the hills, and you can draw it and stuff. Breaking Point as well has like all the hills and the maps. All right, let's see what they do on offense here. We're rolling towards the A side of the map, chance, but again for the defenders for Rocker there. You see, there are towards the low left. Well, you say defenders, it's only one. Lin's by. This is an interesting A hit. Able to get some good damage in. That means Rocker need to respond. I've never seen a team do it like this, but I actually kind of like the way they did it. That's quite the angle from Awakening. Oh, the timing is rough, and now he's been pinned down. Lin's fighting for his life on the inside of Red. He stays alive though. Do you believe this game is a 60 point hill game? Leads re uh, really matter in this game because there's a good amount of hills with insane power positions. Holds have never been more effective holding over breaking this year. I mean, holding is over over breaking. Uh, we should make that clear. Uh, you'd always want rotation over not having rotation, but I do think there are a lot of hills that are harder to break this year. Uh, but you're always going to, I mean, it's not like you're going into a map wanting to break kills you always want the rotation for sure but i definitely i, I think you're right like this this game specifically there are a lot of hills that are hard to break haven't seen much of the hill news uh new hills and whatnot are the changes good or not some were good most were not i would say I think that's basically consensus. New patch, most hills are breakable except P2 Sid. Actually, yeah, you're right. I should have prefaced that with what we were accustomed to based on the old patch. New patch definitely feels, um, at least like on invasion, like P4, P5 now are, are much more contested in terms of like white time and stuff. Which I don't know why they made the change like that. Like obviously it needed to be changed, but it didn't need to be changed like that. Same thing with P4 Karachi. P5 Karachi I could see being a money hill. P4 Karachi though is very contest heavy. Similar to the invasion one. Would you say new spawns are worse? Um, well the new spawns are just in combination with the new hills. I think terminals, well terminal had new spawns for sure. I didn't really see new spawns with like Skid Row 
I mean, I mean, I guess sub base Karachi invasion new spawns just because of the new hills. I think it's more so that the placement of the hills, or like how the hills play out. Like the the new invasion P4 just makes no sense. Like new invasion P4 is think about it as like old uh, sub base P3 where it was just full on white time the whole time. For awakening to maybe check this from this angle, he better get there quick because that bomb is nearly diffused. Oh dear, that's the round. I completely forgot what was happening this round. Very, very slow. Okay, they just got bombed down, but they're playing retake. Oh, Lens gives a free kill. They lose this round. Oh, Reese got picked. Lynch tries to be proactive, make a play. He doesn't think there's going to be someone short this late in the round. Like he's looking, he's probably looking for the B uh, or the A rotator. He doesn't expect two guys to be there and that guy to be so close. If anything. Thank you guys all for tuning in, by the way. We have 269 viewers. This is probably the most I've ever had. I don't think I've ever had this many viewers, but thank you guys for, for tuning in. Glad you guys are, are sticking with me this Sunday morning. Hope everyone's morning is going well. We're just chilling out here. Just make control. Smoke the bomb. Oh, if Lin's got that kill though. When do, uh, YouTube videos are fire. Big fans of your work. Thank you guys. Appreciate you guys. This is the TED Talk for COD. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. You don't really see people doing like talking over VOD and watching it. So we're just chilling, doing Q and A type stuff. So hope you guys are enjoying. And again, like I said, I'm going to upload this to YouTube in case anyone's missed that type of stuff. Are you more of an S&D and control coach or do you do a bit of everything because in Vanguard and Rambo was respawn center was S&D? No, I mean, me and, and Damon both do both. It's, uh, we, just, we just bounce off each other. It's not like, oh, you focus search or oh, you focus hard point. What are main things Ultra are doing that other teams are not? Um, they just play well as a, as a unit in hardpoint, and I, I believe in search too. Like their their calls in search are are good and have always been good. I think specifically respawn, they play off of each other well. I think Toby is insane. I think Kleenex makes a lot of impact plays for them. How are you feeling about the Miami change? Um, it'd be interesting to see. I'm surprised they took out Eric Boom in the first place, right? Because he was originally on the starting roster, if I believe correctly. What was your reaction to Shotzi's smoke on bomb? I was mind blown, as probably everyone was. Dude, I saw him going for it, and then I was like, there's no way. Like, th that's going to hit the top of the diner or the top of the, the red roof, right? And it landed right on the bomb. I was... I was laughing because I was like, there's no way that's real. Is there a way you can see how many untraded kills ultra opponents get in total? Uh, yeah. But yeah, again, they 
they do well with trading with each other because they're they're always playing kind of together and that's hard as a team to do to be on the same page like that i think we're getting there i think we're almost there i think we're again like you saw at the the tournament we're really good at hard point it was just that phase series that we didn't have the best hard points unfortunately but again like like i said before it's not even our hard point it's our search that needs improvement and everyone on the team knows that Like, I really wanted to match up in Toronto just to see how our, our hard point would face against their hard point. Because our scrims are always battles. So many choices made that resulted in a win there for Toronto Ultra. Three to one. It's hard to get good search practice, isn't it? Yeah, kind of. So that's why you kind of have to just like focus on yourself and get in situations that you're not accustomed to getting and just adjusting based on that. But you're just being comfortable in what you want to do is kind of like the main thing. Like... There were some situations where we were in like 3v3s and we just weren't comfortable with what we wanted to do, which shouldn't have been like the case. Or we just need to get on the same page with like just being on the same page. And that's not a surprise to anyone. If you watched our VOD, you probably think the same thing. We, we, we had to talk about it after the event and we're going to work on it. Because we know if we can get good at search, like we'll be disgusting. And it's always like a fail safe. Like it, let's say you do lose that map one. It's a fail safe where you're like, you're going to map two knowing like, oh, we're God like S&D team where we'll just win the series 3-1 instead if we lose map one, you know? Do you think the new patch will make it two AR, two SMG meta more often than not? I know Land brought the lot rival out. I don't think so. I think, I think if anything, Rio will balance it out because we're going to get most likely rid of terminal which is basically a 4 AR map for both teams. And now we're bringing it into probably, well, most definitely a 2-2, two, two, maybe even a 3-1 sub. I would assume 2-2 two, two, two and possibly 3-1 in some hills, but we'll see. We'll see how the meta shapes. Was this a reset or something? Yeah, this must have been a reset. What happened here? I was going to say, I don't think the map ended, right? Yeah. Just a reset. Will you, have, will you guys have time to test out Vista before the stage starts? I actually don't know. Um, so I believe it comes out, what it come out? It comes out on Tuesday or something. I'm not sure if our esports build will have Vista in for that. I could be wrong, though. If our esports build has it, I think there's a possibility for maybe getting, like, put in mid-stage, uh, but I'm not sure. I, d I definitely don't think we'll have it at the start of the stage, but I do think Rio will be in. When did you guys start scrimming post-major one? We started on Wednesday or Thursday. I think it was Thursday. Seventh to Wednesday? Yeah, okay. So seven, the seventh might be... I just don't know if our esports build will have Vista, and if teams will be willing to possibly add that map in with just what is it a week and a half before the first uh, set of matches. So we'll see. I mean, it's not up to me. It's let's see insight one v two. He's opting to go to A. Yeah, that's what they're going to do. He's kind of reading this. He has a cross, though. Oh, he's under them. This is insane. Now he's going to go back to B because he didn't see them A. This is actually crazy. That's crazy timing. Ships in the night, straight up. He's probably mind blown right now. Would you prefer a five or seven map pool for our point? Depends on the maps. Are there maps that are bad in the seven map pool? If they're bad, then no. 
if they're all if there's seven really good maps then yeah sure seven's good do the hard points play drastically different with the hill placements no just those hills play differently honestly like invasion p1 p2 p3 basically play the exact same if i had to guess even though p1 shifted a little bit I, I, it basically plays the same boys playing well in the scrim since the major yeah um what else how long you been playing the guitar i actually started like last year i don't play too often i just i know like chords and stuff i don't really know like finger picking or anything more advanced still basically like a beginner intermediate just any any song that has like chords i'll probably be able to do but anything past that bar chords are kind of annoying too i'm not really the greatest with those hey we broke 300 thank you guys for tuning in this is actually crazy never had 300 before can hit, keep hitting new records feel like you really want to keep p3 gas spawns now oh for invasion yeah kind of so like it's just weird because it's so easy to get killed off time so that hill that p4 hill is just like a little white time the whole time because you just let's say you're you're holding it let's say you're holding it from mannequin side and you're on the hill they can just go top american or top flag whatever and then shoot you down on the hill like there's no there's really not that many contest spots and if you are contesting let's say you're that close like corner pushed up towards that american wall or like towards palace like that that you're holding from mannequin you know front left wall that's probably the easiest way to hold it if i had to guess but if you don't have a trophy you're getting naded out so regardless you're getting pushed out in some way and it just ends up being this stalemate of white time bar chords are a bitch but unlock so much when you dominate him yeah that's why i keep hearing but i dude i just can't get it down i really i gotta practice that shit more because I, I don't practice it as much hey man can you explain why you time me out just weird questions Loki, I think Palace side is truck. Guy should be left on the hill hiding for American. Yeah, basically, but it's also, once again, you can just get super tacked out. So you're just trying to have a trophy and not get, not get nated, basically. Have your people cover over you. But you can hold it from both sides. It's just hard to just get in the hill and stay in it, I would say. Let's see if they check the credit corner. He's got some help from number seven over here. Oh, that's a big kill on the on the lurker player. Linz likes to play that lurker inside red. Proning behind the motorcycle is also uh, an ideal thing too. Wait, how did he get the... How did Insight die? Oh, he's in the smoke and killed him? He sees Insight here? Damn. Do you think a three-gun meta could work for this game? Probably. There's just not a third gun that's worth it, I think. What's the score now? A oh, 3 5. I liked how Toronto worked that. A little more aggressive. They're trying to bait out Lamar here at Top Cafe or Top Castle. Top, to like he tries to get the shots off. Scrap is so close to getting this kill. Angles, Why no snipes in S and D? Um, the pro said it was too easy to use. I'm not knowledgeable enough to know if it's too. I, I think it's too easy to use, just simply playing off of it. But it wasn't even my decision. Yo, XC Harp, thank you for the five gifted, bro. Appreciate that. 
Thank you, thank you, man. And also, yeah, it would be one shot. 150 health is kind of weird with it. So, a one shot with 150 health is a little bit different, I think. But apparently, they just said it was too easy to use, which I understand because I thought that was pretty easy to use when I was playing towards the beginning. I haven't used the snipe since like the beginning of the game. Ooh. That was two big kills by Linz, but... Yeah, they, someone's got to hop the bomb. You just have to... Yeah. From Minnesota, it's like, you got to hop the bomb and just hope Linz wins this gunfight. Fortunately, he doesn't. He was kind of close to it, too. That was a good Karachi search. Invasion control, everyone's favorite. This was played a lot at the tournament. A sided break. Already two capping, three capping now. Someone watching the cross, maybe? Yeah. Oh, Kleenex getting team nated. What the fuck? That must have bounced off something for sure. Hey, glad, glad to hear that, XC Harp. Thank you, man. I want to. I, I, I kind of want to do this more. Maybe I'll start just doing in the mornings like I'm been doing. I usually just go to the gym in the mornings and and like do any prep stuff before practice. But I can do this, and then just go to the gym later after after scrims or something. Have y'all scrimmed Rio for S and D or control? Not yet. I heard some teams tried it for control and were, or I don't know if it was some teams or it was definitely LAT and they, they were like, oh, we should try it for control. So it's possible. I think teams will, will test it out. Search um, has been talked about for being tested, but I don't think anyone started screaming search since the event As against pro teams. I mean, has Toronto been firing in scrims as well? I have no idea. We, when we play them, we're always back and forth. That's why I wanted to play them at the tournament, just to see how we'd matched up, like at land. Evasion is just so sadly dull and yellow and ugly. Yeah, I think they could have done better with the colors in general in this game. I just always like the Treyarch colors better. I mean, getting two ticks and then fully capping B is a death sentence for anyone on defense. Now they can just work back blue here, and this is this is very bad for Minnesota. They know last guy live is a search. If they get this kill, they can just get right on point. They get the kill. Let's see if they can cross. Oh, he stunned. He got stunned. It was a big stun. Do you stream phase? Uh, not that often. I would say like once every week and a half or two weeks. Would Skid be replaced by Rio for SD or would it be additional map? Um, I would assume it would, it would replace Skid Row or High Rise if I had to guess. Because those were like the two least played ones, I'm pretty sure. That's what I, that's what I think. Thank you guys all for the follows today too, by the way. Any new viewers watching, appreciate you guys. But see, so like they're up 18, 12 lives. They only have 50 seconds though. So like this is a situation where you're trying to just like get trades. And it's kind of hard to do when you're spawning so far out in this map. But like look at this control. They get the kills blue side, like mid side. They have like mannequin control now. This is very hard for Minnesota. They can just single this guy out on point. If they can get cross before number one, uh, number one didn't even look. He looked for the mannequin guy. That's just hard. You're not expecting to be crossing the point while you're also trying to kill the guy mannequin. It was just good, good plays out of Toronto. They capped that. It was a good offense. I mean, that's that's just what happens if you get those initial two caps because you went a off the break. You won the break. Sometimes the break is just everything in in control. 
Do you guys base your videos off of the team you're playing against or your own team's worst non-favorite maps? Uh, kind of a mixture of both. I think it depends on the team we're playing. But a little mixture of both. Do you think pros go overboard with GAs or do you think, feel all GAs are beneficial to the league? I think there's some that are kind of overboard. Like I would like to have seen the like the DDoS this year. I didn't think that needed to be banned or GA'd, whatever it is. Some like mo I would say most are reasonable, but some are kind of overboard. I would agree on that sense. Which teams do you guys or which teams do you guys scrim the most? Um, it's a balance. I don't think we there's one necessarily team that we scrim the most. We kind of scrim everyone pretty evenly. And it also depends on like who we're playing that week or next two weeks. Like because we were we might play one team in two weeks, we probably won't play them. So that kind of like balances everything out because we'll play the teams that we weren't gonna play in another week where we played matches, if that makes sense. But like after we play them, the day after, we'll start playing them again, basically. <clears throat> How has your role at Optic changed over time? Um, not much. I kind of did the same thing with Ray last year. But I guess once Ray left, uh, I had a little bit more that I had to put on my shoulders in terms of like coaching but I mean the players made that easy for me and then Damon has made my job a lot easier too nowadays so I I don't think it's changed too much it was just a little bit different when I was the only one last year or it was just a little bit more workload That was huge kills. This is the uh, like you don't get B off the break here, and you don't get A here. Like this is what happened to us, where like Lamar stayed on point and got these kills, and they also got those kills on B point. That's this is why we lost that round five versus them. But if you get these guys bo off both points, and then put them in a chokehold like this, it's super hard to break. Do you have a favorite map to watch? Um, favorite map. I like Karachi. Actually, now once uh, Rio got in, I actually really like Rio because it's just it's just a bang out. It's just super fast paced. I'm not gonna lie. I think Rio might be my favorite map to watch, and hasn't even been in the rotation yet, simply because of uh, how fast paced it is. I think I think players, not not only players and teams, but like I think the community is gonna love watching that map. How data focused do you think the CDL is? I feel like there's a lot of potential for teams to invest in software, data tools. I don't really see Ben, you and Ben really having a data focused approach. Um, there are some analysts that have data focused approach, but yeah, there's there's always opportunities to strive more. It's it's a little bit harder now because the league isn't providing data to us like they did in previous years. So that's kind of unfortunate because you're just like, oh, they're not putting those resources there for us anymore. But I do think there's there's room for it. Is it true that the boys didn't get good at sub-base to the major? Um, yeah, kind of. Like It was always like okay for us in scrims. It's not like it was we were shit on it in scrims. It was just our worst out of those maps. And then once we got to the major, like we were actually playing it pretty well. And we were down to play it. And then we played it versus FaZe, won it. And we were like, okay, well, we like it now because they played it. They played it well. Or no, was it? Fir yeah, it was first phase first, and then we played Seattle on, I believe. Do you see? Do you think the CDL would be gone after this year? I have no idea. I hope there's something because, you know, I love COD and I love what what I do. But I don't know. After the layoffs and stuff, it doesn't look pretty, but 
Hopefully there's still like a lot of support for it. We'll see. The team has been playing more methodical this year. Will we see glimpses of that fly pass team like last year or is flying somewhat ineffective in this COD? Flying is effective in some situations, but I'd rather the team play more methodical than flying, if that makes sense. Especially in this game, a little bit. It's a little bit more methodical, I think, than last year's game. I think more consistency in, in the methodical approach. And sometimes the flying is methodical. So I wouldn't say that it's like one or the other, if that makes sense. What's S Optics S and D breakoff strat for Crossy asking for a friend? To win the yeah, to win the round is the breakoff strat. Win the round. But in reality there's a there's a lot of different ones. Shotzi loves Rio, I bet. I don't know, you have to ask him. I haven't really asked if they like the map yet. I think they like it in terms of just playing it, but I think people are just going to like it in general. I think he's going to like it just because he can use his sub on it the whole time. Yeah, I talked about the shots he's actually thing earlier. It's kind of getting overblown, in my opinion, but whatever. I think it'd be cool if they let coaches on stage actually let him talk to players while the game is going on. We we kind of talked about a uh, kind of talked about that earlier, but I like that there is a skill gap with how the players will have to make decisions and, and communicate in real time, and they don't have to rely on a, a fifth person. But it's a it's a debate that everyone's gonna have. Like honestly, if if there was a coach on stage, I wouldn't mind it too. Obviously, Damon would be the one on stage. But I don't think it's needed. I think I think having that skill gap is important. Thoughts on your username, Silver Priest? <laughs> you're you're crazy, bro. You're crazy for making that your username. <laughs> You like Fortress and Hotel over these maps? I actually kind of like these maps better if I had to test. Actually, Hotel might... Hotel Hardpoint I kind of liked a little bit. I'd put that in this map set. But I didn't really care for the MW2 maps too much. Also, these maps are definitely better for search. And that's saying a lot, because Skid Row and High Rise, I don't think, are great maps. Even Terminal is not that great. I think Karachi's, I think Karachi's the best map for all three game modes, if I had to guess. If I, if I had to give my opinion. You ever play Ranked? Um, I played a lot last year. I haven't played too much this year. I got it to Crimson something last year, solo queue only. And then I just, I don't know, I got bored of it. I like watching a lot more than playing. Because at a certain point, my skills like don't match up to what I think I could do, if that makes sense. I'm getting on the older end. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I wouldn't mind Fortress Hardpoint. I'm just saying, like, the, the map itself I didn't think was great. I like the map because we were fucking really good at it, but... You'll get some entertainment for playing with Ben J? Yeah. I'll tell you that. I'll play, I'm better than I'm better than MJ. I'll say that. Or MJ. Ben J. I don't know why I said ben, MJ. If one of the players is sick, does Karma sub in? Yeah, I think I think it would be our emergency sub. Has anyone ever told you you look like Pau Gasol? I got that once before in a, like a YouTube comment or, some, or something. Yeah, 
you gotta do the impossible. Seth would be a good sub, but I don't know if he'd want to do it. I don't know if he'd want to play. Perfectly. Because if you play, you can't stream during the match, so you can't do the watch party. So I technically don't think he could um, sign like a player contract or whatever. Because there's that, that coach streaming thing, right? Where you can't like watch uh, the CDL while also, or you can't even stream or something while, you're oh, while teams are playing or something. I don't remember the exact rule. What's your analysis of Ultra so far? Basically, what I was saying was before is that they just play together a lot. They're on the same page for pretty much everything they do, especially in hardpoint. Like their search is good, but their hardpoint is, or even just control, they're just on the same page. And that's kind of what we were saying before was like, their core stayed the same from last year and they made COD Champs finals last year. So it wasn't a surprise that they were gonna be good. We're a little bit different where we had to make two, or we made two changes. So it's, I'm not surprised that it took us more time and it's not an excuse. It's just that like, they got on, on the same page quicker. Would you guys ever leak the guy's scrim results last year when Name came in? I mean, I could, but it's like, I don't know. It upsets me because it's like we, we talk about scrim so much and then we just didn't have anything to show for it for the last, for like, what was it, two month period where I felt we were like the best in the game, but we just never won the tournament. I'll say this though, there was one point during the year, like a, a, one, a one month, or so what, what was it? Yeah, there was one point during the year, a month and a half period, where we won 90% of hard points. But we didn't have anything to show for it. No tournament wins, just, what was it, two second places. And that's just, it upsets me where it's like, oh, well, leak your scrim results. Like, who the fuck cares? Like, we didn't win a tournament for it. What are we going to brag about scrim results? Like, scrims mean nothing. That's why I would never like when people are just like, Oh, what are, did you do well in scrims today? Did you, no, how many hard points did you win? It's like last year I could have told you we won out every hard point that day. We didn't win the tournament though. You know what I'm saying? Like, Who you guys scrim today? We're off today. We, we start back up tomorrow. Some teams are taking off today. Some teams are taking off tomorrow. We decided today. What do you think Optic's biggest priority heading into stage two? Would love to hear your thoughts. Uh, keep up our hard point from what was at the event. Search and destroy, being comfortable mid-round and in advantageous situations, being on the same page together on what we want to do. Which is probably the biggest thing, def definitely the biggest thing for our search. And then control, kind of just sticking to what we were doing on Invasion and Karachi and pro trying to improve our high rise. If high rise still is, is a map and it's not replaced by Rio or something, like people were saying. The thing is, like, no one likes to play high rise except us, or at the time, us, FaZe, I think Vegas and LAG. I think we're the only four teams that he would even, like, try to play it. Just another 3-0. Alright, before I start this uh, next one, I'm just going to go to the bathroom real quick. I'll be right back.
All right, we're back. Move on to phase Toronto. This is the, what was it, winter finals? Missed my question. Speaking on subs, do you think Pettigram is getting hoed? He's been a sub for Boston. Even with dropping cap, they don't want to start him. Yeah, I'm surprised he would be their sub then if he wasn't going to get a starting position. Thoughts on Greece being added? I don't think it's going to be added, if I had to guess. Ryu is for sure going to be added in a hard point, I think. But we haven't even tested Greece, so I would assume it's not. Did you guys ever think about getting S&D coach? Uh, I don't think so. It's not up to me. What earbuds do you do? Or do you use? I just bought these on Amazon, these like Sure earbuds. I was tired of wearing a headset all the time when I'm just at my desk, so I just started using these. Wait, let's go back to the Vitos. Because this was interesting Vitos because they're both uh, double terminal perma Vitos during this like uh, entire event. So Toronto Vitos terminal. So FaZe doesn't have the Vito, so they Vito Invasion. FaZe Vitos terminal search, so like Toronto doesn't have to Vito, so they Vito high rise. And it's a Karachi map one, which is a Karachi hardpoints one that they both liked going into this event. It's like, it was like a hundred bucks, I think. It was a sure, sure earbuds. They're really good, I think, so far. They like kind of like mold into your ear. They're, it's not like a personal mold, but the way that it, it fills up your ear. When adding a player as a sub also being to not allow other teams to pick them up as easily if they're nasty at the game? Yeah, well, they would have to buy them out pretty much if they're contracted with the team but the thing is a lot of teams will not want to have to pay a buyout so rather than play or rather than pick up that person they'll just pick up another person it just happens to be if that person's like super nasty at the game like undeniable then teams will play that buyout otherwise they'll try and look for a cheaper option i think that's i feel like that's what's happened a lot of times all right, Ultra's got this early rotation. They've got P5, like ticket control. Let's see if FaZe can break this. Ooh. Insight's big over here, if you can stay alive. That's a big kill. They do get the trade, though, so they do get positioning. But Toronto's actually playing this well. That initial like P5 position was important for them. Thirty seconds left. This is the last push. Big kill by Scrap on time, and now they're just getting the crosses. Phase has to rotate. Who's your COD goat? No bias. Damon probably. I don't know. Seth. Krim. You can't go wrong with any of those, bro. Yeah, Krim with the most championships. Seth with probably the most talent ever, plus the things he did for COD. Damon, three rings, like, unsung hero for that Dynasty team. I feel like you have to say Krim because of the championships, though, unfortunately. I, I won't say unfortunately, but, like, just because he was able to get so many. But, like, if you said, like, who's the best player to play COD, I don't know. I feel like talent-wise, it's got to be, like, one of those three. It's so hard. What about Clay? I think Clay's top five. I don't think he's the goat though. Nah, I didn't mean unfortunately. I meant like if I had to pick one. I, I don't know why I said unfortunately. I think it's because people were trying wanted me to say like Seth or something. How good was Prime Jacob? Jacob was godlike and like old MW2 and BO1 from what I heard. Ooh, 
Yeah, one to four Optic Dynasty and then five Clay. I think you can make an argument for Clay over Formal, but I don't know. That's, that's a hard one. I would say one to four Optic Dynasty and then Clay. Yeah, and Jcap won two or three Jetpack champs and got second at the last one, so. Could make the case for best Jetpack player of all time if you wanted to. <laughs> Yeah, Clay three rings is probably why I'd put him over formal. That's a good. That's a good point. For some reason, I forgot that Clay had three rings. Yeah, Damon's top three for sure. And argument for for one two. If you don't want to place it all in championships with like Krim. Let's see if they can hold this P5 for the rest of the time. Oh, it's good team shots. But look at the split spawn. Do they read this? This guy definitely gets a kill on this break. Number two. Let's see what Envoy can do. He hasn't even got a kill yet. They don't know. Wow. Insta break because of that. That was a good good break. Got blessed with kind of like a Swiss bomb, but I guess he didn't really get a kill or anything until later. What do you think about Sledgehammer allegedly working on both Ghost 2 and AW2 but having to take over MW3? I mean, just make a good game at this point. AW2 would be cool. But I'm more excited about the Treyarch games, bro. If the Treyarch games are good, or that'll just be so much better. Toronto hits through old here. They're going to try and get this red control to break on in. Let's see what they can do. Oh, wait. How did Scrap get that kill on time? Oh, he just sees him on the counter. That's a huge kill. Then they get the kill on Sim. That's an insta break. Damn. Wow, big two piece. That's a guaranteed hold now, pretty much. They got out spawns for new too. Those kills are huge because now they're gonna have at least a little bit more time on this last 30 seconds. They're gonna get broken on in, but if they can hold this next rotation, that's huge. Let me turn this up for you guys. I'm in the back door, Ruffy. It's gonna be close. Look at the two, bro. Only one up. Yeah, already right, I think. Yeah, bike's already right. Huts, Huts. You get out. I have time. Huts is big, Dad. I'm mid alley. One more bike pinch right now. Mid, by the way. Okay. Could be there. Could be there. Their comms are so calm. And this is. Everyone's always said this, but like. It's actually impressive how calm they are in the comms. I think we have great comms too. And you don't necessarily need to be calm like this, but this sounds so weird compared to like our comms. I think both of our comms are good. Like, don't get me wrong. I think our comms are great. But having it, there's like two sides of the spectrum where we're a little bit more, I don't even want to say chaotic because we're not chaotic. We're, it's like good. It's just more energy. This, it feels like they're, I don't know. It feels like they're about to fall asleep, but it's, it's great in terms of like calmness, which is like to each their own. This is just really interesting. And it's always been like a insight Kleenex thing, I guess. Probably new. Yeah, it's definitely new, probably. I'll come with that, be alright. They just want that. Oh, 
Two 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 and then fucking two time. Who's on there? No, wait, wait. Oh, uh, no, nah, I think he's shot up there. Yo, listen, I'm gonna pitch straight off hold, okay? That's definitely weak. Kenny brings the calm element, yeah? I mean, kinda. It's not even like. I don't wanna say the calm element, but this is just like their demeanor is calm. Like, they're, they're still calming kind of the same things that we would calm, but in just like a. Like, calmer way, no pun intended. Every kill you get, they're gonna spawn out behind you guys. Just one sap. Top chop out. Yeah, Scrap has the energy. Scrap brings the energy for the team in terms of like dead, one shot, that type of thing. But inside Kleenex leading now with like it's just it's just interesting. It's just different. Break coming through. The best way I could put it is like. An average person can hear their comms and probably decipher what's going on. <laughs> or maybe, okay, maybe not as much, but like compared to everyone else in the league. But like our comms might sound chaotic or more chaotic, but they're still getting the same thing across. And if you're a player that can handle that, it's fine. Like all our players know what the fuck's going on with our comms. There's nothing, it's not like anyone's too chaotic or anything or too much energy. It's, it's just not as like calm as this. I don't I don't know. It's 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 weird to hear because I'm so used to hearing our comms. Which is very difficult to do. You're just getting closer and closer to the finish line. It's just one more play. One more set of kills can close it out this next hill. Yeah, AG's got the supreme energy in matches. Thoughts on Nelly yelling yo 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 before the call out. I mean, I remember what, or hearing that interview, or not interview, that uh, that listening, and I think it only happened once, but yeah. I mean, as a, t as a team, it wasn't the best comms. But that's just me being used to our team's comms. This is going to be an interesting end. Toronto's already kind of like got this P1 positioning. Kleenex should get this kill, yep. Last guy's secret. Oh, Cell stays alive though. This is not good for Toronto. They got to break back on in. Scrap from the top rope though. If Scrap dies here, I think it's different. Like it, it becomes way different. Because they just went off here, right? They have to. Yeah. So they're going to win off this. Let me see what the fuck would happen if Sim stays alive. Like if Sim wins this gunfight over here. It's just a good child by Scrap. It's good optic Texas burner. Yeah, grand finals for Rashi was even closer. I remember that. All right, let's go to search. Invasion search. Hey, thanks for the sub. Optex, Burner. Appreciate you, man. You know when we're getting new process episode? No idea. I would assume... In a few weeks or something, or actually, what wouldn't they usually do it, but like before the next major or something like that? I don't, I don't remember how they used to do it. Do you remember the JCAP S and D post from World War Two that you posted? What motivated you to post that, and how do you get those stats? I don't remember what I'd posted. I'm not gonna lie. I think it was one of the with or without you stats. I don't know. I was just at, during that time. I was just trying to find as many stuff that I could get and like find insights in some way. But the thing is like World War II was probably the golden age for data 
and what we were able to get get like from Activision. So there was a lot of uh, there was a lot of data that we were able to get that we don't really have access to now. That was like full kill feed data for matches, like um, player death and kill locations, weapon use during that, all this type of stuff. What's your background in data science? Uh, no, I actually, I went to school for labor relations because I was going to go to law school. So all my data stuff was kind of like self-taught and a few college courses, uh, but mostly like programming and Python and R. Hey, Shmevs, thank you for the, for the sub, man. Appreciate that. Hey, we're over 400 viewers too. 404 error. We're at 404. That's crazy. First time breaking 400. We're still continuing to break these viewership records, I guess. We're going hard. Today's been insane. Thank you guys all for the support, honestly. Like, 400 viewers have been, been fucking crazy. I think actually, no, just drop. Rip, but... We did get over. Do you still do programming on the job or mainly Excel sheets? Programming. I don't use Excel, like, at all. I'll use like CSV files that I make through my programs, but I don't like open up Excel and do stuff. Database queries. Yeah, basically. I don't really use SQL, but I'll use um, R to query stuff because I don't really have a big, a big enough data set to have to use a full on database. If that makes sense. How has Damon been to work with? I've been answering that all day, but I love it. We work well t together. I think everyone on the team just gels with each other, which is cool. Will you be posting vids of new patch anytime soon? Uh, maybe. I don't know. I've been liking streaming, and streaming has kind of taken some of the uh, time away from the videos. But I, I am going to be uploading these streams. Plus the scrimp. Like, I've been focused on, like, work work. So I haven't been able to get as many view videos that I should be getting out. Honestly, I haven't been as consistent with it recently. You don't need much calculus on the job, no. Any good COD stats websites nowadays? I think Breaking Point does like the best job of it. There's some people on Twitter too that tweet out some good stats. Wait, let me see what they did in this round. How did he get this kill on the tank? Oh, wow. Inside just peeled him. He's probably like trying to jump onto the tank or something. Please push the test in new maps. We're, we're trying. We're definitely, like I've said, we're testing out Rio hard points. Most likely going to get in if I had to guess. Um, we might be testing out Rio control as well and Rio search is what I've heard. But I'm not, I'm not sure on what people are doing. Definitely Rio search. I'm not sure about Rio control yet. Do you have plans on jumping ship and becoming an analyst for a different org or optic in the stream and you want to stick? No, I mean, I love my time here. Why would I want to jump ship? I don't What am I going to jump ship to? That makes no sense to me. Why did Troy Sender dip optic? I don't think it was his choice. I think that's what he said. I didn't. I don't think he wanted to leave. I think it was like a budget thing or something. What's the consensus on Greece? No idea. Unfortunately, I don't think it's going to be getting in for the stage because we're we're testing out Rio, but we're not testing out Greece, and that's that's what I've heard. You may have said it already, but what are your thoughts on new spawns and hills? Uh, well, saying new spawns are basically just because of the new hills. I would say Terminal got new spawns, kind of, but Terminal just plays horrible. I, I don't mind some of the new hills on terminal, but it just plays bad with the spawns. Invasion P1 is the same, so I, I wish they would just keep it cafe, but they're probably not going to revert that back. P4 kind of sucks because it's all white time now. P5 is P5 is not that bad, but I do see it being um, more of a contest time as well because of nades and stuff. Karachi P4 and P5. P P5 I, I'm still yet to have a decision on, but P4 I don't like. I'd rather be in the fountain. 
Would you te- say the team has progressed in S and D after Major One? We haven't really, we haven't practiced it yet. We've just talked about it yet. We're going to be starting to practice search this week. I don't think any teams started to practice search because a lot of teams are just rerunning hard points again and again to get the feel for the new hard points and also practicing Rio for the first time. So I don't think any teams practice search since the event against pro teams, at least I should say. Um, new map that's coming out in two days. Like I was saying before, I don't think we're going to be playing that for the next stage. If anything, if it's on our esports build come Wednesday, like when the new map drops and the new esports build gets updated to the new patch, there's a chance, I would say, if it's good to be played maybe in the middle of the stage, maybe it can be finessed that way. But if I had to guess, it would just be Rio for right now. Have you seen a big difference with trophies not blocking streets? Yes. I think that's going to be a very, very big difference. You're guaranteeing a kill now every time, which is really big for breaking hills and stuff. It'd also be really big in search too. If you get a, if you get a streak in search, you, you're you guaranteeing a kill if they don't get inside and you can get full site control on some of these maps. Yeah, for sure, how it should be, 100%. Out of a curious curiosity, what do you do for a living during the cutoff since it's six months long? Yeah, it is a long ass break. I uh, I've been trying to just enhance my work, learn new stuff, coding wise, and take courses. I was trying to be super productive over the last one, but I might as well take a full on six month course at this point. Like, I just don't want to have to pay it tuition or anything. You know what I'm saying? But. We'll see. I might do something extra. I was actually mostly focused on the YouTube stuff this off season with that, like taking courses, YouTube stuff. Kind of random. But what's your favorite TV show? Favorite TV show of all time is probably Lost. I fucking love that show. I know there are some, some people have gripes with how the seasons went with, uh, oh, look at this angle. He's trying to jump on the bomb. See top broken. Some of the writers like kind of messed up during one of the seasons, but I still love that show regardless. It's probably my favorite one of all time. SpongeBob clears, yeah. Thank you guys. Uh, by the way, all, all the follows. I see a lot of follows coming in, but thank you guys. It's been a cool, cool day. Honestly, a lot of support. Appreciate you guys. Get an online masters. I was actually thinking about that. Georgia Tech, that's a interesting, that's interesting. Honestly, might do something like that. If you can get, if we, if I could do it in like four months or five months, that would be, that'd be ideal. Or maybe I'd have to do it like across a few different years or something. Because once the season starts, I don't know if I'd have time for it, but we'll see. COD pros don't want to change because they're afraid of losing their good maps. Oh, part of esports is being flexible. Yeah, yeah. Especially in Call of Duty. Just because the game changes every year. You don't really see that with other esports. What's the best way to increase your aim? Uh, shoot bots. Learn centering. Learn centering, shoot bots, get reps on it. That's the best way. What's the education requirement for being a COD pro, bachelor's in data science? Well, being a COD pro, there is no education requirement. As long as you're good at the game. <laughs> uh, no, Shotzi does not have a college degree. I don't think anyone in the league except maybe a few people. I know Slasher does. Clay, I don't know if he fully finished college. But there's only like a like a handful, I would say, if anything. Yeah, Ix 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 has uh, a degree. I'm pretty sure. Have you guys played Rio Control? Not yet. I think LAT said that they played it, and they were asking teams to try it out. But I don't know if anyone else has tried out yet. We don't play today, so maybe we'll try it out tomorrow. Yeah, Dan was close to getting his too. 
Kenny, uh, actually, maybe Kenny. I know he went to school. I don't know if he finished. He might actually. He definitely did go. I'm pretty sure. Favorite PS2 game? Uh, probably NFL Street Two or SmackDown vs Raw. I think it was 2007. One of those two, for sure. He didn't finish? Yeah, that's what I assumed. But I definitely knew he went. What time is it? Oh, we're at 11.13. We've been at it for, for two hours now. Thank you guys for tuning in. We're still holding a good 365. This is actually crazy to me. I just named the two best games. I know, bro. Those games were godlike. Part of my childhood. Let me see how they did this. It just took straight up mid control. I'm surprised no one on phase. They had no one on phase watching the mid cut for a little bit. Like usually, if you're playing. Double B, you'll have the guy like mid tank or at this courtyard, not like pushed up into cafe. I'm surprised they did this. Hey, thank you, Radiation. Welcome, bro. Are you a Devils fan or am I tripping? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a Devils fan. Not the greatest year, but our goaltending kind of sucks. Would you ever do analyst work for, work for Optic Halo? Um, I don't know. Maybe. I don't really know the game as much, which kind of sucks. I would definitely do it, and I don't know if you're, we, they have access to like data as, as much as like I'd be able to. It'd be hard to switch over for something I don't really know much about. Like I know more about like CSGO and Valorant than I do Halo, if I'm going to be honest. Like if we got, if we got like a CSGO team, I'd like to like at least test out working with them. I think that would be cool, like over the off season. How's the scrims going for your team after the new patch? Good, but I mean, again, like, we've only had a few reps on each of the maps, but they've been going good. Is there public CDL data? I don't even think so. There used to be when the CDL, like, would uh provide it, but now they don't provide it, and I don't, I don't know if there's any public ones. There's just, like, websites that have the stats, but not, like, raw data. Since COD Pro careers are so volatile and have horrible job security, how does one balance education priorities with COD priorities? Well, you see a lot of teams or a lot of players in like challengers uh, getting degrees with, with CCL teams, like scholarships with CTL teams. I think that's the best way to go about it. Like if you're a challenger player and you're not like at the top, top, or even if you're at the top, like having that back of, of working with a CD, CCL team and getting that scholarship while you're playing is probably the best thing you could do, in my opinion. Just having that type of backup plan. Hopefully Vista plays good so Terminal Invasion can go. Yeah, I mean, Vista at least looks good at a, at a mini-map sense. And so do Rio. So Rio, Rio I, I do like, but Vista, we haven't even tried yet. Can CCL players get NIL deals because that's an economic support too while playing? I'm not sure. That's an interesting... I don't know if they'd be covered under NIL. Maybe they are. That's a that's a really interesting question. Yeah, New Terminal is awful it is. That's actually a really interesting question. If CCL players can get NILs. Bro, what is this guy talking about? You're getting timed out. Odd behavior. Oh, huge kill. Now they're double point. 
One guy holding the cross. Oh, Cell lost the cross gunfight though. They're gonna they're gonna break back on in. Damn. If Cell doesn't die here, they they win this round ASAP. It's a big big kill by uh who is it? Envoy. Just looked up and you can get NAL deals. Oh, interesting. Have you ever watched the ALGS for Apex or not really? I watched the, what was it? The champs last year with the, like the team comm stream. And I actually loved that. It was actually really fun to watch. I'm not gonna lie. I think they do battle royale esports the best out of everyone. Like that's how you should be doing it. I should, when's the next, uh, like match day or whatever for optic because i'll probably watch that because uh that was that was definitely fun watching their champs and like watching their team comms i think that's such an interesting way to do the streams it is today oh damn maybe i'll watch it later on i don't know if i'll stream it though i'll probably be i'll probably be gone i'm probably gonna stream for another like hour hour and a half i think is seth doing a watch party seth might be doing a watch party for it I'll probably watch that or I'll watch the team comms from the the team stream. Apex is entertaining though. Not sure if you talked about it, but what is really necessary? Was it really necessary to change the cross GP4 and P5? I personally don't think so. I think they should revert it. I think the only things that needed or needed to be changed was the invasion shit. Invasion P4, P5 and... You could say the terminal ones, but the terminal ones are still ass anyway, so it doesn't really matter. JPs are all SMGs, uh, having a harder time getting used to the pace of the game. Yeah, I was kind of talking about it before, but it is, it's not even just getting used to the pace of the game, but also the maps being more AR dominated and it being the beginning of the year. It's always those players that struggle a little bit at the beginning because they're the ones having to make the those impact plays and getting the situations is not necessarily like apparent at the beginning but like as you progress and later on in the year it becomes more apparent hey dbd do you know they'll announce venue for major two i actually don't know I'm surprised they haven't announced it at this point yet because it's what like two months away so probably soon if i had to guess do you like the new spawns now after seeing the scrim for a couple days uh i just don't like the new hill placements and i think the I think the spawns are contingent to the hills. So it's just the hill placements, honestly. Favorite three CODs doesn't have to be competitive. Black Ops 2, Black Ops 3, and for competitive, I'd say AW, but for me playing, like nostalgic wise, would probably be old MW2. That's just, I remember the one I had the most fun with as like pubbing with friends and stuff. In like middle school. What about Rio? Seems like two SMG meta map. Yeah. Honestly, it could be, could be three. We'll see though. But definitely, definitely two. Hey, thank you, Kirko. Appreciate that. Hey, oh yeah, the Halo team also does play today. I'm not sure what time though, but I'm definitely gonna watch the apex one because i think i might be doing something during the halo halo one a break for phase here it's weird they're just waiting for someone to like cross yeah toronto just gets kills at the cross that's the thing though, like you send those guys towards the A point to deny it, but now they get a free reign towards B. That's kind of the the gamble with those like middle towards or A breaks. What do your family and close friends think about your career as Cod Islanders? Um 
they they're supportive they think it's cool i'm i'm glad like at first they were skeptical at least my, my family because they didn't really know what what it was and they were like oh you're going to law school right and then i got accepted to one and then i got the offer from new york and i was like ooh, let me test this out for a year and see how it is but they've been supportive ever since so i'm, I'm pretty grateful for that Rio's gonna get veto versus Optic. Most teams not want to play Shotzi and Pred on their on that map. Maybe we'll see. It is gonna be SMG dominant though. Well, I, oh, law school could always be there. That that was my opportunity. Like, I was only gonna get this one chance of getting a, a shot for a team. And then I could have law school later on. I could always fall back to it if I needed to. Yeah, exactly what X Real has said. <laughs> See how FaZe tries to break this. Already got the B point. Once again, like tied lives, but they have to make plays to actually get some like mid map control. A's, Asim, what's good, bro? Thanks for the sub. I texted you already, but congrats on the on the new team. They still only got a minute on time. Oh, Scott got that kill. They still got trades, though. So this is where, like, FaZe starts getting this mid-cafe control, and they can start getting pushed up. If they get another wave here... That's the thing with this map. You have to get like two, two and a half waves to actually get on the point, which kind of sucks, but he gets into Mannequin here, and that's that's big for a BZ because now he can get another free kill. Oh, maybe he doesn't get a kill. Oh, no, he does. He does. He stays with this map control. A hey, Sim with the gas, bro. Sim is the absolute gas. Yeah, it's all this cafe mannequin control right now. You see, oh, there we go. Three down instantly. So, like, getting this first wave is probably the most important thing. And then once you can start getting pushed up more, and you start getting this type of control, that's when you see teams actually start getting on the point and having a chance. But the way you want to do it differs by team. And I'm not going to say how we like to do it or how other teams like to do it, but, like, once you get this first wave and start getting, like, this type of map control, like, over here... Obviously, you're going to have the, the chances to cross and get in. Have you ever thought of doing different hardpoint sets per map to where it's more of a variation each map? What do you, oh, you mean like kind of like a different rotation every time you play it? I think it, I think that creates a lot of variance where it's not necessarily best for competitive because you want to be practicing and you want to be playing what you're like, what you're practicing. So having that variance, I mean, I guess you can say like those who can adapt the best will be the most competitive and I get that argument but I think having the consistency gets the better teams to win more times out of not yeah teams started not running covert after a little bit or after like the first match or some some players, some some teams. Thank you guys for the follow. Still, we're still holding the good viewership. This is insane. I don't remember the last time I broke. 150 never mind we're, we're staying consistent at 360 this is actually insane appreciate all you guys seriously oh shit i almost took this thing off my mic 
don't know if you saw that. I know this sounds bad, but do you think Boston should have benched Capsule over Pentagram and released Pentagram instead? I mean, I don't know. It's their decision. It's not my camp. I think Asim showed what he could. That's why I get picked up. Dude, Asim's even in the chat. He's just like, dude, what are, what are people saying, bro? What CDO pack or what CDO team pack should I get? Optic, obviously. Optic Tech says, boy. We need rank streams. I just don't like playing rank, dude. And at a certain point, you deal with hackers and it's like, bro, what the fuck? I just like watching stuff better. Also, my PC, I don't know if I can even play and stream at the same time. That shit might lag the fuck out of everyone. See, this is kind of what I was saying with Toronto. Like, if he, if they get start getting these kills, like in cafe and this one other kill, they start being able to cross to the point. This cafe kill is huge. Or not being able to get traded in cafe, like that's that's what they're trying to do. How do players do well so reading spawns or, or on a such inconsistent spawn system? Just a lot of reps with it. You're basically just playing probabilities at this point. Wow, they, they got onto the point without getting killed, but everyone else died on the cross. No trophy. It's just a lot of reps and a lot of just playing off probabilities. Like there's going to be a lot of times where teams don't read the right spawn and you'll see that in, in matches too. But it's hard in the moment when all of the things are going on at the same time. Do you guys normally scrim against FaZe or not anymore? Uh, we scrim them every like once every two weeks, I would say. Terminal spawns are a joke. Yeah. We were kind of talking about that earlier. That's why it's getting removed, in my opinion. I, I think I would like, I keep saying, but I'd be very surprised if if Rio doesn't get put in for terminal. Control needs to be replaced with anything else. Yeah, but what else is in the game? CTF isn't even in the game. That's the unfortunate part. I initially liked the new terminal as in like, I liked where the hill placements were. But after seeing more reps of it, Rio is better. Is JP Hispanic chat? Um, I'm actually a quarter Dominican, half Italian. And my dad speaks fluent Spanish, but he didn't teach me when I was young, unfortunately. And then I guess a quarter like German or American. Like American as in like my great 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 grandfather fought in the Civil War and they were in the US, but they're originally from Germany. I don't know how that actually works with it's like, okay, I'm a quarter, whatever. I actually think control in this game is a lot better than last year. Like, a lot better, entertaining wise. I think Karachi control is really entertaining. Even invasion control, people don't like as much, but. I think it's better than high rise. High rise is just three, four down spawn trap. I mean, I guess this is too. This is just super defensive sided. Are you optic coach? Uh, yeah, kind of coach analyst. Me and Damon work together. Why can't we just have uplink? Uh, because we have boots on the ground, but yeah, I would love uplink too. If we could just spawn in with Jetpacks Game 3, that would be ideal, in my opinion. If you were to bring back one map from MW2, what would it be? Uh, 
Honestly, Hotel, just because it could work in all three game modes. I don't know. I didn't really like the MW2 maps, I'm not going to lie. Actually, you know what I'm surprised? I'm surprised we didn't try out Mercado Hardpoint. Isn't that in the game now? I'm actually low-key. I literally just thought about that. I wonder if people would want to play Mercado. I doubt it, though. Um, maps as big as these is better for players to be aggressive or passive. It depends on the situation. Mercado isn't in private match. Oh, rip. Never mind that. If, CEO, if Rio was implanted into the CDL, which map would you remove to uh, Terminal? And I think that's what's going to happen. Mercado S&D was not great. It was one bomb site. I think Mercado Hardpoint was cool though. Maybe because we were good at it. I was, maybe I'm biased. Oh, a little sub-base action. <laughs> Implanted is crazy. Bring Bowcage back. That is a map. I'll say that. <laughs> yeah, you meant implemented. I, I, I got what you meant. Hot tech, I hated watching Gunrunner. I actually thought Gunrunner was the best map in MW2 or MW 2019. Would Terminal S and D stay? If I had to guess, like I was saying before, I think Skid Row or High Rise would be first go because that was those were the two that were played the least. I'm pretty sure. But honestly, like, I think Karachi and Invasion are the only like good S and D maps in this game. I'm not gonna lie. Bring Fortress back? Yeah, I don't know. I don't even like Fortress as a map. We were just good at it in Hardpoint, like really good at it. Fortress search was stupid. Raid would be good? Yeah, Raid's always good. Raid would be good in any Call of Duty, let's be honest. Good job by Toronto holding that. This is where the P2-P3 chain gets really weird. You don't have this anymore with the new map, but... If you can chain this... Number one spawned out, so they should know. I guess they didn't find out in time. Oh, no. Now FaZe is spawned in the back. Kleenex is just destroying right now. They finally get him off the streak. Those big kills. On that old P3, just getting in that getting that P2 control was just so important. That was a good break out of Toronto. They're playing for the new match for the major, right? Yeah, we'll be playing the new match for this next stage. Like the online matches and then the major. We'll be playing it. So far, how are you liking the new patch for scrims um, with the boys? Good. I like it. I mean, it, everyone's got to get new reps with the new hills. Honestly, the math plays very similarly for the hills that didn't change. Like, pretty much exactly the same. So it's not too much. It's just those new hills that you got to get accustomed to. And, like, rotations, the new rotations, kind of, if it changed, uh, if it changed based on the hill. This was a really good play out of Envoy. I remember watching this live. Going all the way out here. He knows that someone's probably going to be watching the cross. Just happens to... Actually, did Sim... Oh, no. He, he knows from the death that uh, Kleenex got. So that's a, just a good trade out of him. And then he gets the second one on sale. 
Is sub base control good? I've never actually played sub base control. I'm surprised that's not getting tested, honestly, either. Because I remember they changed the the spawns for it. Do you think Kleenex playstyle has changed, or do you think Envoy enables him more? Um, I think I always thought Toby was a good player. I don't think it's changed too much. I think he's just. I think he's always been good, honestly. I th he's always been like impactful for Toronto. Is Ryu in for terminal confirmed? I think it's all but confirmed. I think it's basically going to happen this week, if I had to guess. I think they're doing a vote soon. Yeah, people were still getting sound hard. So covert. Yeah. Any new season maps can be tested? Not sure about Vista because it hasn't come out yet. I just don't know. So chat, the new esports build is gonna be moved to the new patch, like the patch uh that we're currently playing on in, on our main accounts on Wednesday when the new season comes out. So I don't know if with the new season, that's gonna be updated on the new esports patch or whether, whether we're gonna be delayed on this patch right now, if that makes sense. So I don't even know if Vista will be in the esports build going into this next stage. So the only case for Vista possibly getting put in is if we um, test out mid stage and, and maybe get it in mid stage, which isn't, you know, ideal. But it could happen, I think. Sorry if you already said, but how do you like the trophy not stopping the cruise missile? I think it's great. I think that's what it should have been the whole time. I think you're going to see a lot of differences in how breaks happen and cruise missiles are used because you're guaranteeing a kill pretty much this time. And now you see people like actually running into inside buildings and stuff, which they should be doing. Rather than just, you know, throwing the trophy at their feet. I do think it was cool that it would, like, you'd have to coordinate tax to make sure that they didn't have a trophy that was working so you could blow it up. But honestly, the, the default should have been that it doesn't blow up in the first place. Vista comes out on Tuesday, the first match isn't for, like, 10 days. Yeah, I mean, you can make that argument, but once again, it just might not be on our esports build. And we're going to be practicing on the esports build. So if it's not in the esports build, we're not going to be playing it. How often do you see the teams using cruises to break hills now? Very often. Open hills or you're guaranteeing a kill. I was saying it before when we were watching one of the Skid Row hardpoints, but P5, you would you would use it before, but now you use it and you're guaranteeing a kill every time, pretty much. Before you wouldn't because they could just throw the trophy last second. Rio being sitting at around 95%, you'd say, yeah, I would say, dude, I think it's close to 100. I would be, dude, I would be so shocked if Rio doesn't get in for terminal. I feel like a lot of teams want it in. Don't y'all dictate what build you play on? Um, not really. We're just given whatever esports build we're given in is. Like if they if they can't make it for the newest, newest patch, then we, we can't do it. But in terms of like playing maps, like, yeah. But if the map's not even in it, then obviously we, we have, we're eliminated that way. Can you shoot down a cruise? I actually don't know. I think you can. I don't think anyone really goes for it because it's hard to do it. I would assume you can. You used to be able to. Remember that old like BO2 clip of Clay shooting out of the sky? 
How many votes do you need to add to remove a map? Um, I want to say in the rap chat, it's like 9 out of 12 have to approve it. Like over, what was it? Overwhelming majority, where the fuck they say? Over 75%. I think Rio Hardpoint would would remove Terminal Hardpoint, but I don't think it would remove Terminal Search. I think it would remove S and D like Skid Row or High Rise before it removes Terminal Search. Nine twelve is tough, but I actually I think we have the numbers, or I think the league has the numbers. I should say. What stuff are you going to highlight from this map? Yeah, honestly, I I haven't been paying attention to the the map as much as the chat. That's on me. Toronto was just that that first P two from Toronto into the, the P three break was probably the the dagger or not the dagger, but like the biggest thing. And then envoys like play or not envoys play. Yeah, envoys was it envoy? Yeah, envoys play after Kleenex got killed from Simp over here. Envoys play to get this kill and then. Get this Selium kill over here. It was big. I should be I should be focusing on the map though. I'm I'm not gonna lie. Do you watch Halo at all? Uh, I'll watch like the optic matches, but honestly, I don't really watch much out of that or outside of that. And at this point, like this is a scoreline where you can just play ahead. Like when you're up this much, especially on something like like sub base. It's just it's very hard to come back from something like this because they can just keep staying out on rotation and it's 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 hard for you to actually break on in and they can keep the time white and something like this P5 is just, I don't know. There's a certain point at which the score line you have to dictate your gameplay on and it's just very hard. You know why a reason what the reason is why a map gets removed and replaced with another? Why can't you just play those maps, i.e. Terminal and Rio? Is it because of vetoes? I mean, partly, but also new terminal sucks, and I don't think anyone really wants to play it. Like, let's say we kept terminal in, and we added Rio, you would not like you just wouldn't see a terminal in a series. So, what's the point of even keeping it in? If that makes sense, no one's gonna want to play it. Do you think Toronto will stay this form, or did they just have a snake-free tournament? I mean, they're a good team. This was just a really dominant performance. I think, obviously, teams will catch up, but we'll see. I mean, like I said before, I wish we had matched up just to see how we would have done versus them. All right, let's see if Vito's in Grand Finals. It's a little bit different because of the Vito advantage. So, Toronto keeps their auto Vito terminal. Same thing, terminal. Instead, they actually veto sub base because they lost to it to Toronto just then in the previous match. Same veto with the high rise, and same veto with the high rise. Were you surprised how Ultra beat Phase? Yeah, kind of. But I feel like they, dude, I feel like they match up to Phase pretty well consistently. I don't know what it is. Let's go back to map one. Is veto advantage a big deal? Um, kind of depend on. Oh wait, actually, in in grand finals, yes, veto advantage is is a big deal. Because it's like you get to basically pick the order of what you want to play, and you get a lot of the good sides too. But it depends, like if you have the same type of map pool as your opponent, it's not really that big of an advantage, I would think. I also don't think, by the way, I don't know why we still have two controls in Grand Finals. If we have two hard points and two controls, that makes no sense. We should have three hard points, one control. Three hard points, three searches, one control. I don't know why it's not that. I don't know why we're playing two controls in, in Grand Finals. Yeah, it isn't just the control veto. It's just like it's more so like order of the maps and some of the sides, basically. 
Like you can basically order the maps kind of how you would want. But again, like what it should be is that you just you just have one hard point veto. The other team doesn't get a hard point veto, and you have to play three. Or no, sorry, it was uh, what was it? You just just you should you should be playing three hard points in the grand finals. If we're playing if we're playing two controls, like that's insane. The ratio should be the same. We're playing two to one ratio in, in regular matches, and then we're playing one to one ratio in grand finals. That makes no sense to me. Optic space station about to start. All right, I'll probably I'll probably finish this up real quick. I have to go in like 20 minutes anyway, so unfortunately I'm not gonna be able to to watch the full thing. So I'll just finish this VOD session real quick. We'll probably go through it quickly. I'll go through like the respawns or something, and then I'll have to head out of here. Yeah, crazy that the lower team gets a veto hard point and, and search in grand final. I, I kind of agree. With it being best of seven now, and no, you know, advantage, 1-0 advantage, or best, best of five reset. Are you enjoying having the three-ring GOAT coaching with you? Would you say you bring something unique to the table? Yeah. We bounce off each other well. Plus, he has, like, this factor of, like, this accountability factor where you can tell people, like, um things based on his experience or like if they're not you know playing as hard as they should or if they're trolling like they'll listen to him on that like i could probably say the same thing but it comes it's it's different if it comes from like the three time you know what i'm saying can you see rio in the map that recent wednesday replace invasion terminal rio for sure replacing terminal i'm not sure about the vista though like I was saying before, I just don't know if it's going to be on an esports build. If it's good though, like I think teams will be down to try it um, and possibly like play it maybe mid stage if our esports build has it. But for the first few matches, I wouldn't expect one of the new new maps. See, I actually like this found hill. Like you can hold some time, maybe. Maybe what they should have done is make the hill itself bigger or something. But having it on the outside now is just, I don't know, it's its super whack in my opinion. Let's see if Scrap sees this guy back alley. Does he hear him or something? Oh, huge kill. This is a big chain if, if Toronto can get it. Oh, huge kill. Wow. Okay, so they just fully held P4. Held the rotation to P5, like, held off any reinforcements for phase going through red, trying to break that way. See if they can continue this hold, though, with them spawning towards this useless side. They don't, unfortunately. It's trades, trade central. They definitely made Karachi worse now, no. I'm, I'm still up in the air on P5, but P4, I think, is definitely worse. The rest of the, the game is the same though. P1, P2, P3. They're both in the P1. They don't know each other's in P1. That was funny. They were probably like, oh, it's contested? What the fuck? Insight's just waiting for his team. He's just sitting at the DC. Yeah. That's a good that's a good break. Just wait for your team. Wait for your team, you hit it together. They have no one watching like Oh no! It's it was number five Draza who should have probably got a kill there, mid cut, at short, or not short, or, or yeah, not mid cut, short. And then they just converge on hill. Yeah, I agree, Yazo. But also, I don't like the new P4. 
Like, I'm fine with the new P5 on Invasion, but new P4 is... Is just white white time fest, contest fest. Oh, big big few kills out of phase there. Toby's got to make some sort of play for his team. Open it up. Oh, he doesn't get a kill. That's not great. But. It does buy some time to get them over the wall. See, that's like an impact death where it's like, sure, he doesn't get a kill and he dies, but he brought back, you know, all these people to focus on him while they can get out of these cuts for their team. Like, number three, Insight doesn't win this gunfight here, but they're able to get the kill on the hill, get back on time, can salvage this just a little bit. Now they're getting these trades. They're still soaking time. And it's not as bad as a situation. Like all Kleenex had to do was make a play and he did that. Instead of just sitting in a quarter waiting for something, like he made them look for him after getting shots off. Like even though he didn't get a kill. A lot of people don't realize those type of plays because they just died, but... You see how like they he dragged them back. It's big. Because otherwise, these two cuts are just spawn trap simulators. Did you like that they extended the point to the back door in the P2? Oh yeah, actually, I just realized that too. I, yeah, that is a good change. I don't think it's that big of a difference, but sure. <laughs> this is a really close map. Toronto's going to try to hold it like they did last time, where they're holding it from this red side. They're just playing super tight in the hill. That's a big kill. Now they're converging from both sides. This is just super mixy. That's a good break from phase. Oh, inside you got the two piece to salvage it. Wow. That's a play. Dude, them not getting that trade is massive. Wow. That's a big play by Insight. They're gonna try and hit this together. This is this is very similar to that first P4. Where they're just holding from this side, playing it tight. They're spawning diner now so they can have rotation to the P5. They get broken, but they still have spawns for P5. Oh, huge kill by huge kills by Sim. I guess they don't realize that he could be back alley already. Scrap loves playing over here. Good break. Oh, they do get the trades, though. Like, Toronto's good at finding those openings, though. Like, even though they didn't get those final trades, they're they're good at, like, creating those, those openings. Oh, 
back in, getting that nail home. The final 15 seconds absolutely going their way. Now you get a setup around. No, play for Big kills. Big cruise here. Let's see what happens. Does it get blocked? Oh, it does get a kill. It's a big cruise kill. Basically needed. You needed it on that P1. They had no control over it. They're going to counter streak. Does this one get blocked? Oh. No good. That's crazy. Well, new patch, no trophy cheese. Chat doesn't happen on new patch. We're gonna go to a P2. I would have liked them to get more like of this ticking control here. Instead of hitting old. Like it's it's hard because it's a hard decision because it's 17 you're giving them 17 free seconds but you need to you need to have a good P2. They do get that kill though, which is big. But like this is free space for Toronto right now. You get a nade kill, get a kill in the hill. Now it just makes it mixy. They just have no space to work with phase. Like they're kind of just trapped in the in the back here. Like like I was saying before, if Toronto makes it makes advantage of those openings and can get those openings. That's that's a really good break. But you get what I'm saying? Like on that rotation, they should have just got more space on it. They they just they kind of gave Toronto more space than they should have had. All right, let's move on. Actually, I'm just going to do the, the respawns. I'm probably going to have time for the respawns. Searches will take forever. I got to head out in like 20 or like 10 now. Invasion control, everyone's favorite. Dangerous situation for Toronto. If they don't get this kill here. Oh, he does. It's still not a great situation. Insay has to stay alive here. He's just getting teamwork though. Nade it out. Yeah, that's not great. Big kill by Envoy. Big two piece. They get a kill A side here. They can get a point. But they'll probably just default to B. Oh, wait. Yeah, number four does win it. Kleenex draws some of the back. So they're going to get a guaranteed B here. You got some hands on real control VOD? Dude, apparently uh, Shane in the coach's chat was saying that LET tried out and thought it was good. So I think teams might try it out. How did Cell get around? Wait, what the fuck? You gotta kill top blue. Oh, they just didn't didn't have the cross to treehouse, I guess. Envoy doesn't hear him. Can't can't tell. It's actually good. Every spawn's good. I like to hear that, bro. The spawns in hard point makes sense on that map too. For the most part. Like there are some of the, like we were talking about before the parallels and stuff. All right, this will be the cap. <laughs> Bring it to class. Let's watch the bot together. Yeah, yeah. Sam, you yeah, know, on stream tomorrow. Let's, let's watch it together, bro. Oh wait, I'm not. I don't have you modded. I gotta mod you, bro. 
offensive line. Yeah, there's about 97 different corners to check as you're working on the flank. And of course, when you're coming off, Spawn draws the guy on the bridge, the player you have to deal with. So Atlanta phase, everything covered around their base. Nice little map spread. Telling though, throws away his life. So a little bit more pressure on the next. Let's see what they do here. Can they get this cafe mannequin control? That's what they were trying to do that other game. And it was working out. They get the kill a street. That's huge. They get kill mannequin. No. And the map pressure is salvaged. Bay should win this. I'm, I'll be surprised if Toronto even gets to the point. Yeah. Middle break. You can kind of option off to A or B based on the on the kills you get. Some good push up kills. Let's see if BZ can make more of it. Is Rio still a 4AR map or sub viable? It's it's probably it's 100% a two SMG map. Could be three technically. We'll see. We'll see with more reps what people are doing. What your thoughts on people criticizing Shotzi's fast play style? I'm I'm kind of over it. Keep people keep saying it, but our hard point was fine in this event. It was just the the two that we lost to phase. And our S and D is, is more on our mid round decision making and getting on the same page of what we want to do in situations that should be advantageous for us. I'll keep saying it. It was our search. How did everyone start winning all the offenses on Bayesian? People started to realize how to best play it. It's just going to come with time. You see that a lot of times with uh, control maps. Like the start of the year, people will know, have no idea how to win the offense on it. But eventually teams start to get a, a hang of it. Let's see. Yeah, this is very annoying by Envoy getting kills around DVD here. Can they get this kill cafe though? Ooh, got some trades in. If they can get the kill mannequin here, no. Again, you need to get those like two and a half waves of just people in here and then get pushed up once you can start crossing. That's what teams are starting to do now. Yeah, the Halo match should be going on now. Unfortunately, I got to go in like five minutes, so I won't be able to watch the Halo match. Oh, so close. They got on the point, but this should be chalked. Yep. That's the round win. All right, B-side break for Toronto. Those are some big kills, Cafe. Let's see what he does. That pistol is insane, by the way. That pistol is godlike. If Rio Control gets in, what's it replacing? Uh, I don't know. Probably, probably High Rise, if I had to guess, because that's the least played. People were saying Invasion, but like, dude, everyone's playing Invasion, so that I don't get that. You know what I'm saying? Like, if people are willing to play it, why would they remove it? People aren't willing to hi play high rise. So I'm assuming that's going to be removed. What earbuds am I using? I don't know. I just, I bought them off Amazon. They're like, uh, they're like hundred bucks. Sure. Ear earbuds. I don't know what the model is, but they're like one of the top ones on Amazon. I think. See, see how they're, they're focusing on this, this cafe mannequin and get to cross the point. Like, if they got that kill on five, it would have been an easy cap. Now they get the, the trade on him. They know they could be coming, like, 
this no man's area. If Scrap can get one, he doesn't know that they're all not crossing that way. They're crossing, they took routes. But if he had got one, that would have been an easy cap. <clears throat> they still got they still got numbers over here. Oh, unfortunate. Huge kills by Draza. It was a good chance though. But again, you kind of like start from the beginning now. Once you once they start getting kills, the map pressure goes their way. Now you have to kind of restart back to square one. Start getting that same type of control and, and waves again. Have y'all played Rio and Scribs? Yeah, we played Hardpoint Rio um, a handful of times. Yeah, the propane shit on high rise has to be fixed. That's just stupid. This guy A Street is huge. Draza gets picked. Oh, if Kleenex gets a kill, that's you see, there's there's always like one kill that could change things, but it gets stuffed. Phase is gonna win this, right? Oh wait, no, they get back on the point once again. What happens here? Oh, Simp and a BZ both die without getting one. That's unlucky timing. Him him actually taking that. They get on the cross. They just need to hold. Hold the cross, but I mean, it's, it's still solo cap. It's super dangerous. They're crossing, but oh, I didn't even realize the lives. 10 to 5 lives. Oh, this is good. They were just taking the shortest routes to the hill because they needed to. Cruise missile in. Oh! A BZ 2P, I mean, that's crazy. I mean, honestly, since number three dies, they would have traded him out anyway. So it doesn't really matter, but. I wonder if Insight doesn't streak, he just goes to point. But, I mean, obviously he has to streak just to try and help him out. Oh, yo! Imagine we got the second one too. I like this play out of BZ. Instead of like two capping this, he takes that timing to try and help out number seven get these kills on these cross to try and keep pressure towards his A side. It's a good play, and then he could start getting mannequin control. They can start getting at eight point. He can try and help out number seven. This is this is this is great plays. Like they're already solo cabin, they're they're 100 getting B, but he he at least helped them get a ticket A, pretty early, which is which is big. Alright, we'll finish this map. Unfortunately, I got to go after this one, but you guys know how it ends after this. Pretty sure Phase wins this one map. Yeah, they do right here. So they get that tick and then they just have all this map control. If they get this cone kill mid tank, it's done. Yeah, this guy's going to try and go back. Number eight's going to get him. That's the round. Like people just had to realize how to figure out how to play like offense on this map. It's just always what happens. It takes a little bit of time sometimes. Nah, no scrims today. Today we have off. I'm just going to do, I got to run some errands and stuff. Actually, you know what? We'll, we'll watch one more. We'll watch. Uh, we'll watch this last hard point. Let's get a hard point. Fuck it. Errands cheese. Yeah. But like, since it's the day off, I got to, I got to do it today instead of other days. Same thing. Toronto, good side, hard point on skid row. This time they win the break. Same thing we were talking about before. You're going to have a one-on-one -on -one gunfight for whoever died. To see if you can get P2 time. They don't win the gunfight, but they're going to guarantee this old time. 
That's what happens here. So they're going to still start with like, you know, 50 seconds. So they're giving up this 50 seconds because they lost the, the break, but they have this rotation. So they need to hold this, this P2 to make up for it. It was a pretty good kills P5 control. Fortunately, phase has two on time, so it's pretty easy to, to hold. Yeah. It's, I mean, we've been saying it all day. It's just, it's so hard if you have a setup. You have to, like, basically wait for them to scam. And sometimes pro players are just not going to scam. That's why they're pro players. I mean, it's good play, but then look, they spawn out tunnel and they just have the cross to the hill. So they just kill number four for free. And then they can have underneath to see if Scrap. Oh, Scrap hop, hops and gets a kill. Wow. Draza assumes that the, his teammates have his hop, I think. But that's a huge break. Wow, that is a, that is a massive break. Because they're expecting, I guess, him to go low time, but he climbs up here. No one has his hops. He gets a free kill on Draza. Alright, we'll move on to P3. Yeah, it's still trade, yeah. Like, like, trades P3, they're already, they're first to touch P3, even though they were on scrap time P2. Just playing these trades well. Better than phase right now. They have everything everything covered. They know they're probably back alley. They have someone on the pinch. Scrap should get this kill. He does. Now they're sending three back alley. These guys now adjust. Go towards back alley to help. Unfortunately, they're not on time. But they have to use some teamwork here. And this is some really good teamwork. Oh, unfortunately, they don't have enough. Ooh. Good job by BZ. That's just, I mean, that's just numbers there, though. Grouping up back alley, that's what, that's what, that's what happens sometimes. Trial is going to opt to go towards tunnel rather than hit old. Because they already have a guy got stairs. So they're going to try and like work with him. Get that kill. They could technically just bang the hill right now. Yeah, they get they get another one back door and now they're just in the hill. Simp has to give it up. Just playing super tight. Oh, but they get all the kills. Oh, Cell takes a route, that's why. He spawns back down, uh, like back garage. And just goes tunnel and gets a, a two-piece towards the front. Like hindsight, they probably should take routes where they can't be seen from tunnel, but... I guess they're just not expecting him to go, go there. Now he sells making a good play, just staying alive. P2, gonna have rotation to it, or t towards the P5. I mean, in P2. Toronto might as well hit old. That's what they do. They're gonna see if they can go through tunnel, try and teamwork this guy. Very hard the thing to do though, and he gets a two piece. Number six of BZ spawns out, so he's kind of like on a pinch already. They get the kill tunnel, and now he can insta-pinch people that are going to be top plat and like at the courtyard. So yeah, he's just holding this cross now. It's very hard to break. They did get the cruise missile onto the point, though. Which makes things really awkward. Wait, who was on point for them? Oh, it was Draza. He must have just not had a trophy, or maybe they tacked him out. They may have tacked him out. 
see this is what you're gonna see now in like every map like people are using the streak on p5 and it's just gonna cause chaos because you can't really give up these crosses to get the time so you kind of like have to leave it white for a second get the kills and then get on time this is what happens here to phase like they just have to get these kills first you can't just insta default the time scraps trying to get it wall bang unfortunately doesn't get it though But, you know, that streak was useful. It just got him off the point for, you know, basically 30 seconds. Alright. Next P1. Let's go listen in. It's a good P1 time. Once again, just like you saw in the previous one, they're going to have people rotate already. FaZe basically has to guarantee. Number 7 spawns on a pinch, which is crazy. But this is free time to for Toronto. And then they're going to try and work a break after this. It's like, look, they're going to try and take space P5 similar to how they did before. Maybe get a kill here. Stairs? He does get that kill. So that's a big kill. Now, now like, th that's such a big kill because now you have to worry about both sides. Instead of like focusing just hard on one side, which is what this hill usually is, He's you have to you have to make sure that this garage guy first doesn't get killed from anyone coming off old and he's basically gonna have you're gonna focus like one guy on each of these crosses I'm and that's that's sometimes hard phoenix is trying to hide in this little cubby here they know he's here but okay so still 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 easy kills for them because they knew that he was tunnel but Look at this once again. This is a big kill by Scrap. Scrap on Simp, that's a huge kill. Great, great job playing the crosses because they still have to worry about Scrap here towards the P5. They teamwork this together. Now they can just hit time together. They just gotta get a trade. They get the trade. They don't even die for it. That's a huge kill. 40 seconds left on the P2 for free time for them. That's a great way to put it. Their comms are all in lowercase. That's a that's a great way to put it. Cause they're still making the same like comms. Like honestly, I like our comms too. We just have more energy with it, which is not a bad thing. This is just what they they like I was saying before, this is what they just default to. And it's it's funny that you put it that way. Their comms are in lowercase. That's that's a Perfect way to put it. See what happens P4 here. They already got early positioning. Big rotational kills. Now you just play tight. Play tight. You have God stairs. You have the pinch. Number number one is going to be watching this pinch off old in case anyone wanted to take a tunnel route. It's going to be very hard to break for phase unless they can teamwork it well. Yeah, Envoy just gets a, a nice two piece. I wonder if it ends here on this hill. They adjust now, they know they're coming from the back. Now they stack time, watch on the back door. Still have a guy got stairs. And a little cready too. So he gets a free kill. Oh. 
Big break out of phase though. Oh, but they re-break. Wait, what the fuck happens here? Oh, the other guys just had to be... Because number five, child... Oh, Envoy gets a two-piece with a nade. That's what it is. That's a huge two-piece. Holy fuck. And a three. That's dead. I mean, that's so hype. Oh, if he got the fourth, that would have been insane. Here, you, you have to play... You can you can play all time. You still went off of it. I guess not anymore, but... It's still really good time. But again, like I said before, they have 194, so technically a full hold will be good for phase. But look at uh, the Kleenex route. He's already making it towards uh, the crates back here. Sim sees him, right? Yeah, he must have seen him. Yeah, the way he... Oh! The way he chowed it, he knew he was there for sure. And I don't know how Kleenex wins this. That's a huge kill. I mean, they did, they trade him out, so it doesn't really matter. But number seven is going to spawn out. I don't think they read it. They don't read it, though. Oh, they do read it. Oh, huge kill by Envoy. They did read it. Now they have the streak for new. They know one guy's going to spawn back alley. No trophy for sell. They kill him out of hill. He's still in a streak. Oh, they counter streak. That's what it is. Because I knew I knew he was still in a streak. Because when they do that little arrow animation, that means they're streaking. Like he dies, but he's doing the streak still. That's insane. They don't win off of this new time though, or this P5. So Tron just has to break on in for a few seconds again. Big break. Can they do it again? I mean, if you're Toronto, I feel like you you kind of play P1 at this point. Yeah, this is hard. You're, they were kind of in the middle of both. Now you play P1. You're going to spawn here anyway. Yeah, that's what they do. These are big kills, though. Jaws just stays alive. He needs he needs his other teammates to make a play, though. Cell can't get a kill. Clean just got a two-piece. a huge two-piece. They should win the game right here. Yeah, this is, this is hard. Number three's got the... Number three had the stairs. They have everyone else watching... This dub door and it's it's chalked. Honestly, though, pretty good fucking tournament out of out of Toronto. That's gonna do do it for me for the stream, guys. I gotta I gotta head out, but thank you guys so much for watching, chilling with me for the support. Honestly, it was insane. We we got up to like 400 viewers, but that was a W stream. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. I'm gonna upload this to YouTube. Um, if you didn't get a chance to see all of it or if you didn't get a chance to see it at all. And yeah, I will see you guys maybe tomorrow. Maybe we'll do another stream. We'll see. Thank you guys for watching. Peace.